Hello and welcome to The Flicksters. This is the place where two movie geeks bring you all the movie reviews and news you can want in your whole lifetime. Download our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, CastBox and Anchor. Just pop in The Flicksters podcast. Also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. And again, just pop in The Flicksters podcast. (laughs) See you there. I like it. Jovial. <laughs> Jovial. Inviting. Inviting. The invitation. Exactly. exactly. That's that's not that's not a, that's a horror film. It is a horror film. Which I made a mistake of I I actually recommended it to someone <laughs> saying it <laughs> and was they a, hated it. <laughs> it was a thriller. And it is a thriller, but there's also a bit of Different horror of and terror and blood and yeah. stuff in there. So sorry. Um all right, so what what is your top 10 horror film that you could recommend like this or, or a film that you've seen this year horror film that you could say right go out and watch this one and yeah it's it's the only horror film that you need to watch this year what would you say okay i would say hereditary okay yeah yeah but i saw a film recently that i think is in the same it's in the same you, you know when you go to the you go to the shopping market and you yeah. get an aisle of biscuits or whatever it may be yeah this horror film is in the same aisle that's okay. hereditary and we'll right. talk about it later oh we'll talk about it later okay yeah. so ladies and gentlemen you are joining us again for another episode of the fantastic the spectacular the mm. amazing the flixers podcast whoa <laughs> we are on episode 27 duval 27 27 27 amigo Damn. vant was it vant uh vant vant set <laughs> yeah french i mean i'm not too keen on that but okay um but listen how are you i'm good thanks i'm good yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm i'm feeling good yeah i can't yeah. complain yeah exactly rocking your rocking your uh thor odin son yeah t-shirt. odin son yeah. yeah yeah rocking it today uh sorry what were you gonna say before i interrupted uh, you uh so saw a couple of good films this week. Yeah. So yeah, I can talk about that this week. Okay. Yeah. Good. So good. All good. And we've got uh, obviously loads of film reviews. We've got um, film news. Yeah. We've got anniversary corner. Uh, yeah, actually, anniversary corner is a bit interesting this week. Yes, it is because we focused in a lot on these kind of interesting titles. Yes, we did. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. we're going to reveal that later on. We will do. <laughs> okay, but before we begin the show, ladies and gentlemen, we have just got to shout out a few people. Mm-hmm. So We've take it away, shout out. as we do every week. Every you know, week, we, we the love goes around. The thing with love, yeah, love is a it's like a circular. Uh, constantly moving entity exactly yeah it should not stop so when we get love we want to send wanna sp- it right back exactly. out there we're keep spreading the it love out. moving keep it moving you know <laughs> <laughs> so we got some love this week from abby yeah uh, abby of al media yeah uh, but i think this week he actually posted just as abby so in his most raw form exactly which is a, if, you, if you know abby his most raw form <laughs> is a form <laughs> not to be messed with <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny some of the comments that what what i love about it is he focuses in on those funny bits yeah, within the podcast yeah, yeah, exactly. and they make me laugh so much yeah. so i think brilliant. episode 25 we were talking about possession and <laughs> i think we're, talk, we're talking about a film that has the possession of someone deborah logan or the possession of someone Some, yeah and we were t- we were just making jokes about you know how the, the, the these films about possession have always got like a a, a a generic not generic but like a like a standard sort of western name yeah you know the, the possession of emily rose, rose nice name deborah logan <laughs> michael king <laughs> who could be your next neighbor <laughs> exactly but we were also saying what about if it got a bit more international you know the, the possession of babangida <laughs> Bab- you know, from Nigeria or somewhere, or I don't know, so, possession of other people. And uh, he just found it funny that we just, you know, threw out those names. And, but it's so true, though. Yeah. Like diversity in horror films. Yeah. Like, I mean, you don't really see, oh, actually. Um, you do see some. Mate, you do see I some. Think if, 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 if someone like Baba Gila got possessed, people <laughs> might just be like, oh, away. let him stay possessed. It's cool. He can, he can stay there, you know? And it's not, you know, everyone needs a bit of, you know, a bit of spiritual enlightenment, you know, exactly. even Baba Gila, you know? <laughs> So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is killing me. Um, so, Abby, brilliant, man. Yeah, Abby, yeah, thanks for the shout out. And keep, keep your comments coming. We love him. Yeah. 
Uh, next shout out goes to Michelle. Michelle is a new listener to oh, the show. Actually, wicked. yeah, she's a new listener. Really? <laughs> yeah, really. I, I, on and Sunday mornings, I tend to show so Sean special. Connery. So Sean special. Connery. She's a listener. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <should I? laughs> So yeah, so uh, Michelle's a new listener, and she tuned in to, tuned into the show last week. Wicked. Uh, and she loves the show. She said lots of jokes. Yeah. Uh, she's a movie girl. She oh, knows wicked. her movies. Yes. Yeah. Especially we got we first we got, got speaking of the party, and she loves the departed gangster film. She yes. loves films that have a sort of alternative ending, something yeah. that doesn't really sort of uh, tell you what, what it is straight away. Yeah. So stay tuned into stay tuned into the flixes, Michelle. You're in the right place. Exactly. Yeah, any film recommendations you need, come to us first. But shout out to Michelle, who's a who's a movie girl there. So yeah. Exactly. And nice I've got one. a shout out to fan uh, amazing, amazing uh-huh. people. Uh-huh. So I mean, the, you you'll know, but maybe our audience doesn't know. But I mean, we had a bit of a there was a bit of a break in yes. filming yeah. in in recording, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> yeah, in recording, because um, I went off because we uh, were having a baby. Yes, yes. So this is a shout <laughs> out to Ste- thank you so much, man. So this is a big shout out to Steph, uh, who helped deliver amazing, amazing baby of ours called Amara, who was born. Uh, last week yes. on the sixteenth of November, yes, and it's been amazing, man. <laughs> yeah. Emotional, I can imagine. it's been crazy, up and down. But That's why you look so busted. You, you <laughs> Seriously, man, you've not slept. I have not slept. Well, listen, when you have kids, forget yeah. sleep. Okay, okay I haven't okay. slept since like two thousand and like thirteen, man. <laughs> oh Seriously, gosh. man. Seriously, that's what it's like. You're really putting me off. This, you know, <laughs> you'll be next, mate. Oh damn. Okay, now shout out for Steph and Steph. Always, always, literally, any post we put out. Yeah, rest assured, she's yeah. first to like that post or make a comment. Exactly. Like I said, like we said a few weeks ago, number one fan. Oh, wicked yeah? man. So Steph, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Siempre número uno. <laughs> Siempre número uno. Look at that, Steph. Look, he's yeah? actually saying it in Spanish this exactly, time. Exactly, exactly. Para tu, para tu. Oh, Siempre. Wicked. Yeah, no, thanks for that. Cool. Um, right, okay, so let us move on to the movie news, Deval. Yes. And you know what? Some really interesting stuff. We've got some animation, anime stuff. We've mm. got Netflix things. We've got Marvel stuff going on. But let's start off with uh, anime. Tell us we're, about we're, Netflix. We're, we're getting really diverse with this news this week and I'm really liking it, you yeah. know? But uh, there's going to be a theme in today's show. Okay. And it's about titles being mm. just not your basic title. Titles. And we're going to open out with a title of an anime, which actually was... Uh, well there's also a game of yeah. this of this title yeah but the title for me what does yeah, it mean poetic in its most you know <laughs> in its most refined simple way because the concept think about it okay let me, let me just let me just cut to the chase yeah this anime is called devil may cry boom just stop yeah if you're walking just stop yeah for a second if you're if you're typing away, stop typing. Think about it. Devil may cry. Yeah, let's break this down. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's break, break this it down. down. Yeah? One, the devil. Yeah, Satan, Shaitan, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever you, you want to call Diablo. it, Diablo. Any any which way you want to say this, that is a it's an entity. It's a thing that I don't want to mess with. But it's something that is meant to be the most evil of all evils. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Think about the most evil of all evils. It's and think evil about incarnate. That evil incarnate crying <laughs> yeah. devil may cry what will make the devil cry so it's got to be something beyond exactly. the devil exactly what, so what is it Tell I us don't about know it. <laughs> you know what whatever it is I don't and want th- to know this comes from the minds of like some Japanese <sighs> like you know psychos or, yeah, or whatever yeah, no, just... but, but I've got to say one thing like they are legends yeah, like, yeah, yeah, when yeah, this yeah. came out yeah Huge, huge. But the game you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah it's Capcom. Exactly. It's Capcom. So it's Resident Evil, like Monster Street Hunter, Fighter. all those. Yeah, Street Fighter. Yeah. But definitely okay. The computer great, computer game. Yeah. The computer game. I did buy it. Yeah. I was a bit too scared to play it. Yeah. <laughs> because you go into like the seven. You go into the eight levels it, of hell. Right. It's similar to the, the not uh, just one hell. Like, there's eight yeah, levels eight of hell levels according of hell. to. Uh, the divine comedy, uh, uh, Dante, De, 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 what's his name? Dante Alighieri, right? Yeah, like a 16th century, I think, Italian poet. Yes, he talks about the divine comedy of going. He had an experience of going into the seven or eight oh, levels of hell. And you know what? This brings it down to as well. well Do you remember Devil's Advocate? Yes. Do you yeah. remember the, the poster? The, yes. the painting. Yes, that's that, Dante. Cra- yeah, exactly, Dante. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So Dan- Yeah, so uh, the character in Devil May Cry, he's named Dante. Oh. Oh. 
yeah exactly so it's it, it gets deep yeah and it gets kind of deep where i kind of want to stop and just step out because <laughs> i don't want to get involved in this scene exactly. of crying devil yeah shit, you know man, what I'm we don't so, want that. but to, to cut to the chase <laughs> this anime uh is coming on netflix wicked so i'm actually going to watch it because yeah. i like i like uh the devil may cry franchise and yeah. the animation is really slick the storyline slick he's got a massive sword he's got this like white blonde hair, hair. He looks like one of those like typical archetypal Japanese manga guys where yeah. his hair's covering one eye and he'll flick it and be like no, 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 no. just mumble something <laughs> and then yes. slice, slice his sword I and love the way they show that everyone's heads pop off exactly so yeah looking forward Wicked. to this yeah Devil May good. Cry and like we, said, we mentioned before Netflix they are ramping up with the animation and yeah. like you know all sort of stuff yeah. because they know they want to try and compete with with everyone else with everyone man. else yeah. alright what else is Netflix coming up with so Netflix is also set to develop the one TV show. Okay, tell me. Yeah, do you know what? <laughs> deets, deets, give me deets. <laughs> this is this is, is going to be really funny. Do you know why? <laughs> uh, <laughs> this isn't the one like the BBC, the one push program. No, 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 no. <laughs> Guys, please bear with me. Yeah, this is funny because I can't remember what it is about. <laughs> Do you know what? I put this on the program. I did my research on it, as I always do. Yeah. And my mind's gone blank. I can't remember what it is. <laughs> but do you know what? No, no, we'll move on. Yeah. I'm going to sneakily find out about it exactly. as we're going. Yeah. I'm going to come back to it because I have done, I've done my research, guys. I do do my homework. Exactly. And this, look, like this is the ago. way the flicksters roll. We're raw, yeah. unedited, uncut. This is it, man. Exactly. in your face. In but your yeah, face. the one. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right, let's move on to DC now. Dark DC. Yeah. What, what, what's coming out of DC, the studio DC right now? So yeah, so we mentioned this a few weeks ago. I mean, we kind of dip into DC's progression mm. as the weeks go on, just so everyone keeps up to date. Yeah. And uh, DC has begun filming... Swamp Thing. The Swamp Thing, yeah. yeah and we Swamp spoke thing. about this and it's the person like, you know, developing the whole thing and like, you know, at the helm of everything is none other than James, James Wan. You're the one that I want. <laughs> you are the one I want. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but it's like, and, and we were just, we were just kind of talking about this before we started uh, recording. James Wan is behind, obviously, Ackerman. Yeah. He's behind mm. all the Conjuring uh, uh, films. Yep. And he's he's got his fingers in so many different pies at the moment that this guy is a money making machine. He's got basically. his fingers in more pies than Greg's, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. This guy is a pie master. <laughs> he <is>. Yeah, <laughs> he's doing so many things, and and we're going to speak a little bit more about what else you know, other things that he's working on as well. But I mean, um, he's gangster. He's, yeah. he's got he's got so many things going on. Sure, and he's one of those people now that have, he's got into that stage where he's I call it the George Foreman stage yeah yeah it's, it's, it's where it's so good I put my name, name on, on it, it you know and with him if he puts his name, name on, on it, it you know it's going to be good exactly so it's kind of like that stage now you hear oh James won okay I'm yeah. going to buy my ticket or and, you know whatever and, and a clear case in point we reviewed The Nun we watched The Nun um, about three or four weeks ago and it wasn't a great movie no. however however the film took loads of money at the box office exactly and that he just shows it. you he, he, knows, he knows what he's doing like you know you give him a film you give him a product you give him a title he's going to work on it and i'm sure it's going to be good but also i think his kind of his name's been elevated even more now because of aquaman yes yes he can do these That's big worldwide exposure not only that i forgot to mention what about the whole um the Fast and Furious stuff. Mm. Isn't he involved in that as yeah, well? He, he, didn't he do, was it Fast and Furious 7 or something? Which was the record-breaking the record mm, breaking one, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so this guy's doing it. Right, okay. Um, what else? Yeah, so Swamp Thing. Mm. So yeah, so it's, it started filming basically and right. it's going to be coming out uh, next year, I think either summer or autumn or sure. fall. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So look out for that one. All right, and also keeping it with DC, with DC characters that is, um, Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad, yeah. So Suicide tell us Squad. about Suicide Squad. So uh, Suicide Squad 1, this is not part 2 I'm talking yeah. about, but part 1 came out in 2016. That's mm. two years ago now. Uh, and we all know, the, you know, we, we all, well, most people saw it. Uh, Will Smith, uh, Margot uh, Robbie. Yeah. And the excellent Viola Davis as yeah. Amanda Waller. As Amanda For Waller. me, who is my favourite in the movie. She just goes gangster on exactly. everyone. Exactly, proper gangster. Uh, but yeah, so it was uh, written written by David Ayer. Yeah. Ayer, I can't even pronounce yeah. it, but David Ayer. And 
had so many rewrites actually the film went through quite a few rewrites mm. it was it ended up being written in six weeks i believe wow before it's before it went to be filmed so actually pat on the back for david Ayer for actually sure. creating that in six weeks mm. but uh originally the film was supposed to include steppenwolf right. and the parademons yeah who then turned up in in uh, uh, justice league. Uh, justice league well i think first of all they turned up in a dream sequence in Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Where, where Batman's going, he's, he's sort of a... Sleeping at the desk yeah, or, or something. something like that. And he goes into a dream and he, he's like a, he's, he goes into a world where Superman rules the world. Yeah. And Superman's like a, a dark Superman. Yeah. You know, which I think is actually quite interesting, but you get all the power demons and stuff in that. I did like that scene actually. Yeah. Because I loved it because it was daylight. Yeah. Yeah. Ba- yeah, yeah, yeah. Batman yeah. is wearing like yeah. this kind of crazy, like wicked suit. And he takes out the parademons and they're fighting him and he's taking, shooting people. And then we see uh, Superman like going all kind of crazy on him. So apparently, so bringing it back to Suicide Squad. So those, so Steppenwolf and the parademons were going to be in yeah, somehow, yeah. somewhere in, in Suicide Squad. They went to be, I think the main sort the of villain, baddies. Like yeah. The baddies, yeah. <clears throat> but that got, that got uh, switched. I think they wanted to save Ste- Steppenwolf yeah. and the parademons until later films, which they did. Yeah. And then obviously we got the uh, what was the name again? You know, um, where, it wasn't point. No, not uh, Enchantress. 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 That was it. She uh, was all wavy. Uh, Cara Delevingne. That's it. Or Delevingne. Jean, yeah. Jun Wu Wing. Yeah. yeah. Her, so, uh, which was interesting, but some people felt it was a bit too CGI heavy and just yeah. a bit unrealistic for mm-hmm. for the crew that had to actually kill them. So yeah. yeah. Mm. And then and obviously the new the big news about Suicide Squad was the fact that um, God I've forgotten his name now. Who? Uh, Zack Snyder. No. Who's taken over uh, Suicide Squad? Oh, uh, James Gunn. James Gunn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was the other big news. He, he's taken over and he's going to kind of take this into another um, direction. All right. Okay. So, you know that um, that famous song by Mariah Carey, All I Want for Christmas? Oh, yeah. That, All I Want for Christmas. It's you, yeah. Yeah. That, that's really successful, you know. It, that has landed her like 40 million exactly. since it's been out. It only gets released at Christmas. It is. That is it crazy. is the, the, the Christmas song, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's mad, isn't it? Right. So, what do you want for Christmas? You. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can't have me. Oh, man. You can't have me. All right, okay. Um, okay, for what Christmas, else? what I want. For Christmas, I would want something that I think would make me feel so happy. Yes. Almost infinitely happy. Right. That's something that would just fill my heart with joy. Yes. And give me everything that I could ever want in my life. You know, maybe even throwing some 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 jewels or some gems in there, maybe six, even though I've got only... And maybe a glove. Got, maybe a glove as well, yeah, somehow. I think, yeah, for Christmas, if I can have that, you can give me that for Christmas, right. I'd be the most happiest person on earth. I'm going to give you that. And also Netflix is going to give it to you uh-huh. because, uh-huh. according to the grapevine, uh-huh. Infinity War uh-huh. is going to be coming... Uh-huh. On Netflix. Say what? Infinity War is going to be coming on Are Netflix. Are you serious? Do you yes. know what? Oh, on Christmas Day. On Christmas oh Day. Oh my gosh. Christmas Day, midnight. I am wrapping any presents. I'm pressing play. Watching Infinity on War again. Adding it to my favourites. And again. And yeah, that's me. Because you know what I want to watch? I want to watch the beginning bit. You are the children of Thanos. <laughs> I love how that guy is That's a bit so creepy, isn't it? <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. Uh, Ebony Moore. Uh, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, go check out Infinity War on Netflix coming soon to a screen near you. Mm-hmm. Very right. near. Yeah, yeah, in the bedroom, near. probably. Yeah. <laughs> or on your phone or whatever. <laughs> um, now, Sony. Now, tell us about Sony and what they are bringing out in 2020. Yeah, so... As Marvel Cinematic Universe usually do, they plan well ahead hmm. and they'll usually publicize the, the projects they have coming out at different types, different t- times yeah. of the year up until, it could be up until five years or whatever it may be. And Sony, I think, are trying to echo, you know, those uh, practices. Yeah, they're just and, copying basically. Yeah, I'm trying to make it sound better, <laughs> better but they, they're copying. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, Sony basically are saying that uh, June... Uh, sorry, in 2020, which yeah. is, what is it now? A year and a half away? Yeah. Or yeah. two years away-ish kind of thing. Uh, June and October of 2020, they are going to be releasing two great films. Yes. First, the first film is a, is a character 
we've never seen. We've never seen. In live action. But we spoke about last week. We spoke about just last week. And it's almost as if somebody from Sony is listening to the Flicksters and thinking, you know what? Guys, you know what? The Flicksters are talking about this now. We really got to get this released. We got to tell the public what's going on now. Yeah, because the Flicksters are going to get ahead of the game. We really got to stay ahead of the curve, guys. You got to tell them now. We're going to be releasing these films. I was like, why does that not Donald Trump? <laughs> it does. Seriously, you do. So yeah, so to cut to the chase. Uh, June... 2020 we're going to be seeing Morbius yes. the living vampire. vampire that is now set in stone ka they can't change that now they can't change it well you never know actually <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> they can <laughs> and in October 2020 we're going to be seeing Venom 2 exactly and that or, was that was a given we knew that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. because when I as soon as I saw the kind of the box office uh, you know takings for, for Venom I was like this is going to be yeah of course and, and we're going to get um Woody Harson's going to be back in there, obviously. Uh, yeah. And, and but I've forgotten what was his name. God, I only saw this like a month ago. Whose name? What was it? Woody Woody, Woody oh, Harson. Carnage. Carnage. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. The, Cletus Cassidy. Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to get that. But Morbius is the kind of the big thing. And there was was there another one? There was Morbius, and there was wasn't there another kind of character that they Sony have got the rights to, which they might think about? Oh, Craven the Hunter. Yeah. Was yeah, Craven the Hunter. They've got the rights to that. And there is talk of that being developed, mm. but I'm not sure when. I could see Craven the Hunter, you know, dwelling within that world yeah. of Venom. Because he's a, he's a, he's a, like I said, he's a bit like a Wolverine character yeah. mixed with, oh, I don't know, like... Who else can I describe him? He's just, he's a, he's a beast. Yeah. He's the sort of person where if he wants you, yeah, he's, yeah. Do you know what? He's like Wolverine with the guy from Taken. Right. He's okay. got a very, very, <laughs> <laughs> he's got, <laughs> I, I will find you. Nah, he will. Honestly, Craven the Hunter is a, he's a hunter. He's a hunter, basically. And he's Craven. Yeah. Which translates to hungry. <laughs> but no, nah, but he, he can track you down. Yeah. This guy's got beastly strength good uh, uh, endurance. Yeah. He is just a monster. So if he Wicked. wants you, wherever you are, he'll either sniff you out, <laughs> he'll track you somewhere. And I'm sure the, the sort of modern version of Craven the Hunter yeah. will have more gizmos, you and, know, and more what, gadgets. And what do you think? What do you think? Do you reckon we're done with the, with the, sim, with the symbiotes? No do chance. You, do you reckon they, they're, they're still going to be kind of, because remember, there's a whole alien planet full of them. Yeah, the, the Clintari, is it called a Clintari planet or something like that? Yeah, do you reckon they, they could send, I don't know, reinforcements or, or whatever because they're thinking, okay, what's happened to what's happened to Venom? Yeah, yeah, I, I think maybe we could, yeah, you're right, maybe we could uh, visit that planet at some point, but yeah. who knows, yeah. Who knows, all right, okay. Now, here's a name which I haven't heard, which we haven't spoken about uh, on the show before, but it's a name that we do know. I've been a fan of this person, this actor since... Um, it was uh, Ong Bak. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Ong yeah. Bak, really, really cracking uh, martial arts movie set in Thailand, starring Tony Jaa. Yes. And he burst onto the scene because the fight scenes, because of the stunts that he was doing. And I remember watching a documentary on this movie where he was. they prepared for this film for about three, four years, trained, trained up. And I remember watching this documentary and it was, it was amazing, cracking, brilliant film, huge hit mm. all over Asia here in England and, and obviously America, but Tony Jar is back and mm -hmm. he's going to be in Monster Hunter, yeah. which we spoke about uh, we, not too long ago. Exactly, with Mila Jojovic. We saw, uh, we've seen some on-set photos and it looks really good. Yeah. But the on-set photos kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, hit me for six a little bit and confused me because Monster Hunter typically is a sort of a medieval type you know, uh, world mm. with his swords and sorcery and monsters. Yeah. And with Mila Jojovic's character, we see guns. So mm. it must be more of a modern depiction of this. Right, okay. But it looks like uh, Tony Jaa, in the photo that I saw, he's carrying the monster hunter like sword, okay. which is massive. It's like <laughs> an unrealistically massive sword. Yeah. Uh, so, it, uh, yeah, I want to see how this turns out. I want to see him it. swing that sword and I'm, chop something up. Man, I want to you know? see, those see moves. How, like, Yeah, exactly. And he can fight. You oh, know he yeah, can fight. man, he can fight, yeah. definitely. All right, okay. Now, <clears throat> we've been speaking about a lot of kind of spin-offs and, you know, this, this kind of like uh, Marvel are working on a TV shows for Loki, for Scarlet Witch, and the kind of, um, there might be something for the Falcon as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and Bucky Barnes, you yeah. know, the Winter Soldier. But Marvel are keen to to kind of like produce another spin-off. Like, yeah. tell us about this. 
Yeah, so it's I'm spinning around. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Life is a musical, I'm telling you. But uh, yeah, there's going to be spinning going on around here in Marvel in the you know, the writers' room. They can but go anywhere with this, right? Anywhere. But yeah, I think this spin-off is actually going to be if it is made, I can see it being really good. Yeah. Because you're talking about Rocket Raccoon. Yeah. And Groot. Yeah. I am Groot. Yeah. And those two have a camaraderie. They've got Wicked. a chemistry that you know you just you, you can't you can't bottle something like that. Yeah. It's something that is so. Just, I don't know what the word is. It's just so dynamic. Dynamic. It's just, it's and just, just like you know. It's for example, like Rocket Raccoon says the things that no one else wants to say, but yeah, he just blurts them exactly. out and he just says it. And I am Groot. Just says I am Groot. <laughs> I am Groot. That's, that's what I was looking for. Organic. Yeah. And it's a bit of a pun here because obviously Groot tree. is a you know he's a tree type thing. Yeah. Uh, but I think a spin-off of those characters and seeing how they maybe got together. Yeah. So be set, quite interesting. Set back in the day. Yeah. Because. Uh, Groot, I'm sorry, Rocket. He's uh, he's, he's he's he was engineered. Yeah, he was engineered on a on a planet where they 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 conduct experiments on animals. Mm. And you know, I think it was kind of touched on in Guardians One when, when they're in the prison. Yeah, and he, he takes off his it. shirt yeah. or something, and you see like these scars or something on his back. Yeah, they could they could touch on that. Yeah, and obviously Groot, he's a he's a, he's a really rare species. Yeah, that. You know, even the collector, when the collector said, when the collector saw him and said, oh, yeah, he was like, oh, <laughs> what do I see here? And he's like, may I have the, the privilege of taking your corpse on the, on the time of your death? Even the collector well, like values him. a bit him. of him, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see where Groot came from. Maybe there was a time when he could say more than I am Groot. Mm. Maybe something happened to him to limit his dialogue. Who knows? Who knows? But it can go in any direction. And do you think this could be like a movie spinoff or could this be part of the Disney Plus thing? No, it's going to be a series. If it happens, because I think the spinoffs are all going to be type like series type ones. Sure. For the streaming service. So yeah, yeah, but I I just hope the the special effects aren't compromised by it being on a, uh, I guess, smaller platform Mm. because Groot and Rocket are 100% you know, CGI. CGI. Because, you know, yeah, obviously you'll get Bradley Cooper to voice them and yeah. it's, it's Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel, is, yeah. It's Groot. Like, I, yeah. mean, I mean, he doesn't have a lot to say, does he? Man, well, that guy is getting one, paid for just, just, just that doing, guy is just, hmm. saying I am Groot. You know? <laughs> um, all right, okay, <laughs> keeping it with Marvel. Mm. And now, our birdies tell us mm-hmm. that we could be seeing the Eternals a lot sooner than the proper Eternals movie. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so tell us about this one. Yeah, so as I, I think I've, I've said it a few times now, maybe one day I'll do like a standalone you breakdown of the Eternals. Do it, man. Just before the, maybe before uh, Avengers 4 comes out, but the Eternals are an ancient race, I'll touch on that again, mm. li- linked to the Celestials, which again links to the Kree, mm. and also links to the uh, Skrull War as well, because right. they're all kind of intertangled in a way. Yeah. Because they're fighting for things that, each of them believe belongs to themselves, but sure. I digress. But the Eternals, they say, uh, birdies have tweeted to mm. say they may show up in Avengers 4 oh. in some kind of way. And like I said to you, the Eternals, one of them, uh, in the Eternals movie, we know Star Fox is going to show up. Right. And Star Fox is whose brother? Thanos. Right. So we've also heard that in the Avengers 4 movie, there's going to be some other villains around. Who's to say they may not be linked to the Eternals? Mm. Who's to say? Who's to say at the end of uh, Infinity War, Thanos went off somewhere and he bucked heads with some Eternal cousins he's got and a baddie or something. And, you know, then they want their Infinity Stones. I don't know what's going on, but the Eternals may show up in Avengers 4. I mean, yeah, in Avengers 4, basically. But also another birdie sort of half kind of half tweeted (laughs) that... Uh, that we may get a, a, a hint of the Eternals in Captain uh, uh, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. Wow! Because Captain Marvel is going to be space based. Yes. For, for for some of the film, and she's going. Mm. Captain Marvel is rolling with the Kree, right? Who you know did the experiments on Earth years ago, right? And that's and, how she, 
they're linked to the Eternals and so on because the Eternals, I think, did they make the Kree? Oh, I'm getting mixed up. But yeah, the Eternals and Kree is, is kind of linked in a, in, a, right. in a roundabout way. But who's to know? We might get even a, a little one-line dialogue of someone that's an Eternal. Yeah. So when you watch Captain Marvel, they, listen out for the names. There could be a hint in yeah, there. Yeah, there could be a name that they refer to. Yeah. If you don't understand the name, if it's a weird name, ask us and let us know. Just, and we can just, break it down to you yeah, that it could it, be an Eternal. Yeah, drop it in a Yeah, also a post credit scene as well. So oh, be careful man, with that. Oh there's going to be something big, right? Yeah, for sure. All right, okay. So that's the Eternals. And obviously, Flixters will bring you the latest on that one. Yeah. Now, TJ Miller. Remind me who TJ Miller is again. TJ Miller uh, played Weasel <laughs> in... Uh, <laughs> I was going to say Weasel. <laughs> he played Weasel in Deadpool 1 and 2. He was a, he was a Joker guy. <coughs> Let's do that one again. Are you right um, there? <laughs> sorry, remind me again who... Now, remind me again who's TJ Miller. TJ Miller is Weasel. <laughs> Weasel. <laughs> what if I say Weasel? It sounds weasel. so so shady. <laughs> but he played the the, the the funny guy with the glasses. He's one. He's one from the the, the, the uh, the Silicon, Valley, Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley. Yeah. yeah so like you know. And then he left that, didn't he? I don't know. I've okay. never seen oh, right. it. Yeah. I've, I've never seen it. But apparently there was some friction there as well. Yeah. But, but what yeah. tell us this news? Because some news broke out. I'm surprised you didn't hear about this. No? Yeah. I mean, why didn't they let me know? <laughs> Our birdies were tweeting in the wrong area. <laughs> But yeah, so some news broke out. When was it? Hmm. It was it this early this year, I think it broke out that yeah. uh TJ Miller was uh involved in historic sexual assault. Oh god, cases. what the hell is going on, yeah, man? So it happened sometime, I think, when while he was at university. I'm not sure exactly the severity of the the uh, accusation. I'm not sure yeah. if it's been I don't I don't know uh, if it's different dealt quote, with yeah, or... exactly. I'm not sure what the details are, so I can't really comment, but yeah. uh that surfaced. And also, something about him doing a fake bomb threat. I don't know. But yeah, so these are the two headlines that I've seen that have linked him to, or have linked Fox to no longer want to be associated with this actor. This is gu- so, this is terrible, isn't yeah, it? And, and you know what? He's one of the funniest characters yeah, in the film. Is, yeah, he's, he's wicked in it. He's wicked in Deadpool 1 and 2. I he's know. Just, he's just, he's stupidly crazy How, wicked. I bet you, well, hopefully... Deadpool makes a joke about it. Oh yeah, no, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for sure. Like they'll make no, a joke about it. a joke. It's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. It's going to happen for sure. But I mean, what does this mean? Like, I don't know, you know, look, I get it. Nowadays, we you got to be so, so, so careful about what you tweet, what you say, like on social media. Mm. But this thing about something that you said 10, 15 oh, no, years no, ago. It's not something he said. something he's supposed to have done. Oh, something that he yeah, did. Yeah, like he's right. supposed to have sexually assaulted someone. Oh, shit. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I didn't I mean to undermine. Well, like, no, 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 no. I know, I know you didn't. I know yeah. you didn't. Yeah, so it's actually an action, like something physical he was right, supposed to okay, have done. Okay, fine. So I don't, enough, yeah. the, yeah, I don't know what the situation is, yeah. but so I guess that's why they... We'll, we'll get legal on it to find out. <laughs> a legal department. Yeah, we'll get a legal okay. department we'll to find out. Ruffle some papers and <laughs> legal, legal. Let us know. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be sad. Like yeah. you know, he's not going to be in it. But yeah, if he's but turned out to be an asshole, exactly, yeah. then he shouldn't be in it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right. Now we mentioned James Wan before. Yeah. Yeah, the one I want. <laughs> yeah, one I want. He, he's ooh, the one ooh, right ooh. at the moment. So James Wan, we mentioned for Swamp Thing. Uh, Conjuring, Aquaman, you name it, he's doing it, Fast and Furious. But also, he is going to reboot another big kind of movie franchise. Yeah. Tell us about Which this one. I'm kind of mad. I'm kind of like, what's going on here? Resident <laughs> Evil, this, yeah? This film's been Resident going on Resident Evil. Mila Jojovic has done an excellent job in Six that. Six or seven The movies. first one came out in 2002. Wow. The last one came out, was it 2016 or 2017? Yeah. Six films that spawned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and she's gangster actually for being in every single one of them yeah and she's she's developed from mean, from day over, one exactly so she's she's a gangster for this yeah Mila Jojovic but you love saying that name don't you <laughs> do I yeah. do I do I say it's it all the time he says it really good but it's like Mila Jojovic <laughs> I think it's quite a powerful it is. quite a powerful character yeah quite, quite a powerful name but uh yeah so it's going to be reboot, rebooted James Wan's going to be producing or something yeah in it but yeah, I just, I just, I mean, to reboot something, I understand, like, for example, The Shining's coming back. Yeah, after, or, like, yeah, 30, 40 years. Exactly, you know, yeah. you, you reboot something that has been shut down for a while. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's called a reboot, <laughs> yeah? For something that's been out, that was out two so years recent. ago, that's not a reboot, it's yeah. just a sequel, isn't it? Yeah, but from what I hear, they're really looking to change it all up. So, uh, Mila Jovovich, yeah. will she, she Reprise won't be in it role. or she'll... Pass the, pass you know the baton on. I think she should pass the baton. Yeah. I think she's done her time. She's had her 
take on it. Yeah. I think for them to reboot... They need to bring in someone exactly. new. Exactly. Someone fresh. Fresh face. Everything's yeah. got to be fresh. You can't reboot with the same people. Okay. It's not a reboot then. It's a sequel. Who, who, who do you reckon? I'm going to throw my name into the hat. Uh, okay. What do you reckon? Saoirse Ronan. No, nah, this ain't her bag. She, nah. she's, she's an indie girl, man. She doesn't, okay. want, she doesn't, want, none, she doesn't want none of this. The, l- the limelight and this. Yeah. Like, okay. All this well, fakery going on. She, well, just, she doesn't do blue screen. What about uh, Amelia Clark? Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah, I can Khaleesi. see that. Mm. But I don't see her. Having, I don't see her having the grit right. required for this. I don't see her having the grit. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's, I mean, Michelle Rodriguez has already been in it, so she can't be in it again. No, she was in part one, I think. The first yeah. Resident Evil. And she Evil. died at the, didn't she, Did she die? At I'm that pretty one? sure she did. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure she. Did. But there's, there's quite a few people. I think we'll. I'm sure we'll we'll be hearing some casting news soon, and It'll when come it does out. come out, then I'll yeah, well, I'll let everyone know. Well, of course. But yeah. So I, I've got into the one. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, sorry, yeah, the one. So let's rewind a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as soon as I saw it, then I remembered now what it's about. <laughs> so the one. So right. the one. Yeah. And so this is Netflix. They're going to be pr- yeah. producing this, yeah, bringing this yeah. out, right? So the one. Uh, it's actually uh, from a novel from John Mars. Mm. Mars with two R's. Okay. A guy called John Mars, and the one is a uh, set in a not too distant future. Uh, about a a world where you can find your lifelong partner, your soulmate. Mm. Imagine that. You can Imagine find that. your soulmate, yeah, through, or well, sort of, I guess, based, solely based on their DNA. Oh, interesting. On their DNA. So there's, there's, a, there's a, I guess, a... a a, I don't know, a process of some sort mm. where they can harness your DNA. I don't know. <laughs> See how loud mm, they, they, ma- they, they match, match fingerprints. Yeah. They can maybe match the DNA sample and somehow shake it up, do whatever. Yeah. Here's your DNA. Here's your, here's your match. Your match is in <laughs> Cambodia. Go to Cambodia <laughs> this time, that time. Go find Meet them. this person. That's your, D- that's your match. Yeah. It's going to be like that. That's, okay. that's a madness. Because really, think about it. Your soul partner might not be in the same country, city, no. time zone, speak the same language, language as you. So I don't know how it's going to work out, but it's interesting that this book, I'm not sure when this book came out, but uh, this this is almost like dating on another level. Exactly. Uh, it's getting, but you know. Does, but doesn't it, it there's, there's something really kind of realistic about this, this thing where people don't want to spend the time to kind of meet yeah. and go out. They just want to know, right, okay, there's the person out yeah. there. Mm. I want to go out and get this yeah. person and yeah. just save all the hassle of meeting yeah. them and getting to know them and yeah. blah, 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 blah. You have a computer or AI tells you this person is like, mm. say, 90% match for you or yeah. 100% match for you, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Isn't it mad? Like, it's it feels a, it's like a, as if it's... a far it's... cry from the old school. And I mean, I'm saying, what's the old school? I'm talking about like if our parents or their parents' parents. Dating. Back in the them days, you're the, you're the person in your village, the person that you see crossing the way. That you look is at the her, one. She half smiles at you. <laughs> that's it. That's your wife, mate. You're going to go get her. You're going to go and speak to her parents, do the dowry. Exactly. Make the new ceremony. You get married two weeks later, later. Nine months pregnant. Your first kid comes out, out. And that's it. That is it. That's if the lucky, way it that's was. It. But most times even, they'll just say, someone, the, the parents of... Of, the, of of your 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 parents, friends, or whatever, will bring Just their daughter like to you and say, "This is our daughter. She's this, this, and that. You're going to marry her next week." Bob's your uncle. <laughs> sorted. That was back in the old day. That now is so true. Now man. you get your, your, you get tinderitis on your thumb you're, because you're, you're swiping left swiping and right, swiping left and right, up and down. Like you know, who knows, man? <laughs> exactly. All right, sorry, I was just taking a bit of a, a water break there. Uh, okay, so that is your movie news, ladies and gentlemen. So now let us move on to the box office top 10. And God, I'm making these funny noises, but look. <laughs> um, number 10, Smallfoot, which has been there for that. It's been there for a while. Three, I don't know why weeks. Smallfoot won't go away, you know? So Smallfoot at number 10. Now, a new entry. This is number nine, and this is a movie that you've actually seen. Debuted at number nine, though, Deval. Mm, okay, okay, okay. This one is uh, <sighs> Suspiria. This um, is Suspiria. I'm not surprised. So I'm what, not surprised. It, 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 it's, it's, it's going to divide people. It's going to piss people off. It's going to be people, because this is a remake of, uh, of, a, of, of, of the a 70s. Dar- Dario Argenta. Exactly. Uh, movie. Masterclass from 1982, I think, or 78. Se- so something like that. It's, been, it's classed mm. as a classic, yeah. classic, classic yeah. movie. It's debuted at number nine. What does yeah. this mean? What, what, you know, tell us about it. This is a reflection 
Yeah, this is the, this is probably what you call a true reflection. Yeah, of what the people want. Mm. Of what the people want. That's that's as raw yeah. as I can say it. This shows you what the people want. Yeah, the films that attract the audiences and the the, the yeah the, the the demographic of people out there the the density of people that no movies no films no what intrigue is and what they want from a film yeah this divides it this shows you what it is on paper sure so it's done quite shit compared to the rest <laughs> yeah but i kid you not of this whole list of films suspiria i love that is, thing. <laughs> Suspiria is technically a masterpiece compared to all of those. And I choose my my words carefully. Yeah. Carefully. Okay, A Star Wars Born is good, but in in a more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? In a more uh, commercial way. Mm. It's a good film, great film actually. I gave it a nine out of 10. Yeah. But Suspiria is a film that will, okay, put it this way, 30 years time. Yeah. Yeah. When your kids see this film. Yeah it would have aged very well. Wow. Trust okay. me. It would have aged You're, very well. But the whole thing about what you just mentioned there about the demographics, I think about Halloween and the nun, the 18 to maybe the th- 18 to 24 crowd, mm-hmm. you know, the cheap thrills, they want the kind of the jumpy, scary type of thing. And maybe Suspiria is mm. a movie which is has got loads of layers. Oh, makes you want to think about things you maybe got to watch it once twice oh, like maybe a couple two or three times i have to and i don't want to go to the, the review yet but to, uh, this film <laughs> suspiria yeah <laughs> yeah i almost feel like i'm not even equipped yet to fully review it that's deep. i'm actually a little bit nervous about my review that is deep because i don't fully know how i'm going to depict this film to our listeners and that means that it's it's that means it's a great film yes um, and uh, you're saying this in a positive way, right? In a positive way. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how I'm going to fully com- communicate this. Yeah. And maybe I shouldn't fully communicate it because when you watch it, you will interpret the film in your own way. Okay. But... All right, save it. Save it now. Okay. Save, save okay. It. All right, so that that's number nine. And number eight, I mean, Johnny English Strikes Again. This film yeah. has done massive, massive, massive money. And I bet you in a couple of years' time, there'll be another one. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because why would they stop this? Uh, number seven is the Nutcracker and the Four Realms. Again, we haven't seen this, and it's kind of like making its way out. Number six, um, Event Cinema, Burn the Stage, the movie. It's done more than Betty Suspiria. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, that tells you a lot. Number five, A Star is Born. Again, we've seen this. We we, we both liked it. We raved about it, mm-hmm. and it's got so many things you know going well for it, and it's taken a shitload of money. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. clearly you know what, these films on music, these musically type movies yeah. are doing quite yeah. well, right? Okay, Widows, I'm so glad to see it's still in the top five. Mm-hmm. I wish it was kind of like, you know, number one or number two, but yeah. hey, it's, it's done. It's, it's, you know, it's taken its money. Yeah. It's still in there. So go out and watch it. Number three, Bohemian Rhapsody. It's 34 million altogether. M- monster of a movie. Fucking heck. Monster of a movie, this film. And it's done so well in America. I just don't, can't believe that. All right, number two is The Grinch, mm. which I haven't seen. Neither have I. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, if you can kind of let us know what you think about The Grinch, if you've got any comments on that, let us know. And the UK's number one film is Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. It's the UK's number one film. It's taken over 12 million. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's pretty That's pretty strong, right? It's strong, but you know what? From what I've... from Obviously, I saw the film quite a while ago. It wasn't finished when I saw it, but... Right. Uh, I think this film is doing, it looks like it's doing okay for now because of the, the weight and the, 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 the audience that it brings with it the, from the, the Harry, Harry Potter, Potter world. Yeah. But I think standalone, I don't think it deserves it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I've read exactly the same thing. Mm. I, I've, I've read the reviews and a lot of people are quite like saying it's a bit of a misstep and we've got a third one to come yet. Mm. So there's going to be a third one. So, I mean, we'll, 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 we can speak about this yeah. when hopefully we can review it or not review it. I'm not sure. But anyway, those ladies and gentlemen, those are the UK's box office top 10. If you've got any comments on those, let us know, share it, get in touch with us on our Instagram, mm-hmm. on Twitter. Let us know how you feel about it. <clears throat> okay. So now moving on to new on streaming and trailers. God, this first one, I've got us mention. I was just kind of like having a bit of a read. Disney's bringing this new film out. It's a film that you may have heard about. It's kind of like a small film. It's called The Lion King. Mm-hmm. 
The Lion King. Well, yes. It's a live action version of The Lion King. Now, this is an animation which was made in the 90s, was it? Yeah, 1994, I think. Yeah, huge. And then there was like Lion King Part 2. Mm. Uh, there was kind of like a, a Disney, they brought out a, an animation as well. And, and you know, kind of like Simba's or the, the baby of Simba goes off and does little things, little yeah. adventures. There's been stage shows. The stage show to this day is meant to be one of the, it's, been, it's really good basically. Yeah. It, everyone always talks about it. Exactly. So, yeah. so it's this film, this product is taken in like, I, I, I probably want to say billion. So oh like, yeah, yeah, know, for combined sure. Combined with sure. all these things for going sure. on, right? For sure. So Disney's bringing out a live action movie and this trailer has already racked up 227 million views, which it, when you, in the scheme of things, it's nothing compared to Fast and Furious, mm. uh, Infinity War and those okay. things. But it's Disney's number one watch trailer of all time. Serious? Yes. So, and, and I was reading online, <clears throat> some people, they did kind of like an analysis of a shot by shot of... Of the of the trailers mm. of the original one and the and the, this yeah. new one, it was done on purpose. Yeah, they released the the new trailer to be like you know take for take, take same. for take. Yeah, and people are going mad for it. Yeah, people yeah. are going mad. It's going to be a blockbuster. It's coming out. I mean, there's two coming out this year. There's Aladdin, and yeah. there's The Lion King coming out. And it's uh, The Lion King has been uh, the reason why people are so happy about it because obviously it's The Lion King. Yeah. Two is directed by John Favreau. Yeah. Who done the Jungle Book? Jungle Book, which was quite popular done really well yep. and this one um, The Lion King's gonna star uh, Beyonce he's gonna be in it uh, returning as the, the father will be uh, Darth Vader himself James, James Earl Jones James Earl Jones yeah yeah uh, playing a sort of more mature Simba is going to be uh, this is America what's his name Danny Glover Danny Don, Glo Donald Glover Donald sorry. Glover yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> name da yeah, yeah. Donald Glover yeah and then we have uh, also Oh, quite maybe a smaller. Well, we have got uh, Seth Rogen mm. uh, playing one of the uh, Joker, you know, the, the, the baboon and the right, okay. the uh, other creature. Uh, and we also have in a small role, but I really want to mention her. But because uh, when I first saw her, she just blew me away. Mm. But in Civil War, uh, we first saw her as the Dora Milaje that accompanied Black accompanied Black Panther to go meet Black Widow. She's. Uh, uh, what's her name? Not a Koye. What's her name? She's one of the she's one of the Dora Milaje that don't get many words. Yeah, but she's she's been in it for from time. Yeah, uh, she's a German actress, okay. and she's going to be in the the Lion King right as well in a, in a slightly smaller role. Sure. Uh, her name is I'll get her name afterwards. It escapes me, but she's a German uh, actress. She's really good. So I just had to mention that, even without mentioning her name. Yeah, wicked. No, no. <laughs> Which I is kind of silly actually, but hey. <laughs> this is going to be big. Like this movie is going to be big. And you just mentioned John Favreau. He's got a good track record. Iron Man. Yes. The Jungle Book thing. You know, these films make a lot of money and he's now going to be doing the Star Wars thing and this guy Mandalorians. Mandalorians. And mm. and you know what? He he knows how to make these big movies. Oh yes, yeah. He's, he's serious. Think, so her name's Florence Kasum uh Kasumba. That's her okay. name. So I had to mention it because she's good. Yeah, yeah. she's good. Uh, and to think Jean Favreau, I remember him from Friends. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He, he turned yeah, up yeah, in yeah. Friends. Yeah. Pete, I remember him as Pete, oh, the I, UFC guy. Oh my gosh, and he was in Couples Retreat. Yes, that, that was came, a, you that, love that, that movie. Like that. I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like that. I actually I really like that I film, know. you know. I know. I don't know you what mentioned it is. It. Um, all right, so ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't, you probably have seen the trailer, but if you haven't, go check out The Lion King. Also, a new trailer that's also out is a film called Replicas. Yes, Replicas. Stars Keanu Reeves. Uh, otherwise known as Mr. Mm. Mr. Anderson, Anderson, you know, otherwise known as Bill and Ted. <laughs> We're not worthy. <laughs> We're not worthy. John Wick. Yeah. I could go on, but I won't. Yeah. <laughs> but Replicas uh, is uh, Keanu Reeves who uh, in the, well, I think it's not, is it, well, I guess it has to be in the near future because you can't do it now, but yeah. his family, unfortunately, passed Pass away. Yeah. I think it might be is it a car crash or something basically. And he's, his wife and child passed away, which is, it was really unfortunate, but he's a scientist of some sort and he is able to create a replica of his wife Yeah, and I guess bring her essence back uh, in, a, in a similar looking body, like a clone. Yeah. They can, in, that, in that time, they can make clones. And as you can imagine, mm -hmm. it must seem really good at the start. Hey, let's make a replica. Exactly. Yeah. So things look good at the start. 
And then obviously it gets, it goes tits up. <laughs> <laughs> it goes tits up. It's basically, yeah, you know, there's a glitch somewhere, yeah, there, you know, yeah. and things turn sour yeah, so. really quickly. And you know what? It's got echoes of Pet Cemetery. Yeah. It's got, it's, it is kind of, this is a nightmare, isn't it? It's yeah. like, the thing that you love the most in the world, you want to bring back. I get that feeling, yeah. you know, it's been robbed. Yeah. You want to bring it back. Yeah. But should the thing that has been taken away from you, should you bring it back? Exactly. Do you, do you deserve it back? And it's, <laughs> there's echoes of uh, of the force here when they talk about, you know, loss breeds fear. Fear breeds hate. And hate takes you to the dark, dark side. side. You see? And that's what happens in this film. Exactly. Probably. When you start messing around with yeah. this sort of stuff. And this the is... God a, complex. It, it's just... God. You know, it's, it's something that... I know it's easy for me to say because I've not experienced it, mm. but... It's something that, for a reason, yeah, when you go, you go for a reason. Yeah. And you shouldn't be able to make a clone of someone. <laughs> you <laughs> exactly. <know? laughs> because you don't know what you're messing around with. Yeah. And it's brilliant because this story, this kind of well-worn story is being told in kind of like a sci-fi modern day or future day kind of like setting. Mm. But it's it's possible, man. Yeah. These are possible yeah. realities. Yeah, Do you know exactly. that? Exactly. All right. So that's Replicas. That's Keanu Reeves. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how you feel about his acting skills. I mean, you know, he's been no, he's been known to just kind of like be quite wooden. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. But so you know what? I think that's him now. You know, yeah. he's just he's accepted now that way. He's he's a gangster. Exactly. Of these. He gets up for people on trains. Have you seen that clip on a train? What? No. There's a clip on a, a, a on, it was on YouTube or somewhere on Facebook or something. Yeah. And he's just riding a subway like Wicked. a normal person. This is Keanu Reeves, yeah millionaire whatever he's riding a subway like a normal person minding his own business yeah a lady comes onto the onto the subway there's no other seats available he gets up says here have my seat and then he just stands there and someone's recording him oh, that's this. wicked Matt, this that, man is meant to he's, he's widely known to be like a really humble yeah. humble gentleman yeah, yeah 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 and he's had a really really traumatic upbringing i don't know if you've heard but there's been obviously like lots of loss lots of in his life and why, when it was uh the matrix his yeah, wife some, like, yeah passed exactly. away so stuff, he's been through a lot and this man somehow seems to be grounded in some sort of you know mm. i don't know what to call it but he's just yeah he must be like, like, like a really nice guy so yeah he can he can be he can act how he, he likes i'll still watch his films yeah oh yeah. Uh, yeah yeah oh man that's a that's a really good story mm. uh all right okay now we've mentioned actually this this franchise or, or this film popped up on our um, anniversary corner actually but tell us about leprechaun returns leprechaun returns <laughs> hello 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 <laughs> i'm a leprechaun i came out in 1988 but i'm gonna rec- we're gonna return in 2019 for you all <laughs> we're gonna go to the ever end of the rainbow <laughs> Hello, hello. I didn't have myself a pint of Guinness on the way. I didn't know where this accent was going wrong. I'm going to feel lucky tonight. Hey, leprechaun. Oh, gosh, man. Just remind me not to go out with you on St. Patrick's Day. (laughs) To all my Irish friends out there, I apologise. I apologise profusely. Is that the word? Profusely. <laughs> profoundly. Profusely. No, profusely. No, sweat prof- profusely in it. <laughs> well, I do. But yeah, so Leprechaun returns. Yeah, yeah. 2019. Is, okay. No, 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 no. I lie. It's what? coming out in December. Okay. What's so the next month? Yeah. So I'm not sure if it's going to be on. Next week. If it's going to be cinema release or it's going to go straight to digital, like, you know, maybe Amazon or Netflix, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Leprechaun returns is going to be like a horror stroke comedy. <laughs> Of the leprechaun situation, yeah. where he's out there to find <laughs> <laughs> cause mischief, he's, he's like, causing mischief. <laughs> he's looking for his uh, what was it? His pot, gu- of, gold. pot of gold. <laughs> but and it's probably going to be something else. Yeah. But I think it does. It does follow on from the original because oh, okay. in the clip I saw, I think the daughter is now the one that the, lep- the leprechaun is. You know, yeah. so uh, what's the name? Rachel from Friends. Yeah. <laughs> What's the name of her life? Uh, Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston, who was in the original, original Leprechaun. Yeah. I think her daughter now is, is now maybe the, the one that is the, the, lepre- you know, the, the Leprechaun. You know the, the, the picture of the Leprechaun, the poster that we saw? You know what it reminds me of? Do you remember this game, right? An arcade and later on in, I think, on the Sega Mega Drive. Do you remember Golden Axe? Oh my oh gosh. <laughs> Don't talk to me about Golden Axe. I used to... I used to, um, oh, I used to know, right? And I used to and, and play you know that, that used game. To pick up the pot of gold, yes, you can, and, sw- and then uh, a little midget thing, yes, or whatever it was. Yes. <laughs> it's leprechaun. And you can, you can, there was chicken to get your energy back as well, or turkey. Oh my gosh, I used to love that game. I used to love the, it. Yeah, the, 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 I, I used to pick the lady. Yeah, the lady. The lady, the man, or the axe man. The, the, the axe short man. axe man. Oh, wicked and you man. Can, you can ride them dragons. The dragons. And you can get one that does like a flamethrower <laughs> or the fireball. 
the fi- fireball dragon because he can get them from a distance. Yeah, there was Golden Axe, axe. one, two, dun, and three. Dun, 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 <laughs> I used to love that game. Oh man, that was that was Sega Mega Drive. It was working, oh, man. Or Sega Genesis this is for America. For Americans. Oh um, man, you you just you just mentioned the classic <laughs> exactly. bit, man. Exactly. All right, okay. So that was Leprechaun Returns. Now, oh, here's you know a move. Sorry, go you know on. I gotta say, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say. Oh my gosh! <laughs> what? 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 Uh, oh, oh, shout out, Michelle. I was talking to her the other day. Yeah, and. Oh my gosh, we're talking about old school games. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which and you one? know, old school, like, like just any, any old school game or games console, I should say. Yeah. It, guys that were, were like born in or p- played games in the 90s will understand this. But mm. you tell me, yeah, what do you do if you're playing your Mega Drive, you know, and you put the game in, you turn it on, it doesn't work. <laughs> What do you do? You're ready to go mad. No, no, no. Tell me, <laughs> think about it. What do you do? So you, you, you're sitting there to play your game. Yeah. You, you put the you put the cartridge into the computer. Yeah. I mean, it usually it usually does work, but you, yeah. just pull it, you pull it in this time. You turn it on. It doesn't work. You're like, oh, why is it working? So you turn it off. Take the cartridge out. Yeah. What do you do? You blow on it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what like you quick, do. <laughs> like <a> quick. <laughs> That's the standard. That That's fixed everything in life. Exactly. Like, I remember with like a VHS, like with yes. take, take recorders, you'd everything. open it up. It's just fixed. And we're just, we're, we're laughing about it thinking, do you know what? What if you could translate that to today? Like all these Your problems that happen in life. Like you get all these kids doing this, do all these naughty things, even knife, all this like knife crime, anything. You're just like, oi, come here. What are you doing? What you got that knife in your hand for? Come here. <laughs> You're okay now. Okay, go. There you go. Go about your business. That's Just classic. Just blow anything that doesn't work. That is it's, classic. It's got to be quick and sharp. You can't transmit any saliva. Otherwise, you make it worse. Exactly. <laughs> well, sorry, I digress. No, I that's digress. so funny. But that's something that we used to do. Yeah, right? We used yeah. to do that. All right, okay. Uh, now, Deval, do you remember back in 2000, there was a Mel Gibson movie called What Women Want? Starring oh, Mel Gibson man. and Helen Hunt, I want to say. Yes, it was Helen Hunt, yeah. Yeah. Do you remember he gets I struck by... I still don't know what they want, <laughs> exactly, by the way. Well, neither do I. But anyway, he, he gets struck by lightning and then somehow, somehow, he gets the power to be able to to listen to, to women's thoughts. And he then goes on this journey and it's about him kind of figuring out, okay, what do women want in life? So it was interesting. It was really funny. I quite liked seeing Mel Gibson playing this role. It was a romantic film. And normally up up until that point, he was always doing the action films, Braveheart, yeah, Little Weapon, yeah. tough kind of roles. So it was really interesting to see. And I've, I actually do like that movie. And a lot of people were like, oh yeah, look, you worse and stuff like that, right? But hey, screw you. I, I, I thought it was quite good. <laughs> so what we have now in 2018 is, or probably coming out in 2019, we have a movie called What? Men one. Oh my gosh. Yes. So this is starring like Taraji. Sex, Ta- food and sport. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, Marvel as well, probably. Oh yeah. Uh, so this is stars uh, Taraji P. Henson, mm-hmm. who we know from... Um, she's from... Well, she's, she's, been in, she's been in quite a few films recently. She's, yeah. She was in... Uh, Hidden Figures. Hidden Figures. She had her own film a little, a little while ago. Uh, Be, uh, Be, uh, Be, uh, Bad Mary or something. That was something, it, yeah. Something Mary. Yeah. Uh, she's also in Empire, the TV show. Yep. Really good uh, that. No Good Deed with uh, Idris Elba. Came out a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Elba being a baddie. She was in, she turned up in uh, Benjamin Button. Yes, yes, yes. She did actually, yeah. Yeah, she was yeah, in Yeah, that. actually she was, yeah. She's, she, been she's around a really for good actress. Really I like her, actress. I do like her, I do like her. So, so this is, this is that 2000 film movie, but it's obviously flipped around on its oh, head. And so it's man. what men want. And, and I think it stars, um, no, not Kevin Hart. Uh, you been, uh, what's his name? The one, the one from uh, 30 Rock or something or. That's it. What's his name? Uh, like Tracy, Tracy, Tracy Morgan. Tracy something. Morgan. Yeah, in it. Yeah. And I, f- I think he's really funny as well. So it's going to be a great movie. Mm. I think it's going to be funny. And it'd be interesting to see the different take on yeah. it and the different I'm side. Forward to I'm this looking one. forward to it. I think it'll it. be good. It is, obviously, I think a lot of people think they know what men want. And to an extent, it, it's kind of more obvious. Yeah. But we've got layers too, you know. Of course. We've got layers too. People are probably thinking, oh, yeah, sports and sex and like, you know, video games and like. Just, True, it's but true. we more. <laughs> of course, there's more to us than that. Um, but yeah, so go check out the film and tell us what you think. What, tell us yeah. what you want from out of that movie or something. Uh, all right, okay. Now, we mentioned this last week. This is a Deadpool movie, believe it or not. 
So this is a 13, a PG-13 or a PG-12 rated. Uh, this is a different cut of the Deadpool 2 movie that you yeah. saw like, you know, uh, three or four months ago. So this is called Once Upon a Deadpool and they've just released a trailer. So this is coming out in December. I want to say Christmas Eve. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Right near Christmas. Yeah. Right near Christmas. They've released the trailer. Go check it out. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not that interested in it. You're not, no? Okay. Uh, no, because I'm like... You've already seen the hardcore uh, version. Yeah, yeah, and they, the directors made the film that they wanted to make, and I think the studio is mm. putting this on, on mm. them to mm. make this film. Yeah. So... I'm kind of interested to see... I'm how sure it's, it's going to be funny. How it turns out and what's going to be... Yeah. I heard they have, re, they have re, done a few reshoots. Right, okay. To, uh, just not a lot, but just a few reshoots just sure. to jazz it up a bit. So I'm kind of like, oh, temptation's kind of pulling me in. Yeah. So I might, I might, you know, I won't go to cinema for it. Yeah. I might watch it at some point down, further down the line, to be honest. But yeah. All right. Okay. Now, um, we've got a film, a film that's out on Amazon. Yeah. Tell us about this one. The Revenant. Yeah. yeah. With uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, sure. who's now doing a lot of production. Pro- pro- producing you know, stuff. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, so it's out. It's, it's the film that he won the Oscar for, yeah. which I think was uh, just way too late. He's done, he done so many performances that I think were Oscar worthy. But yeah. at the time, whether it's a controversy or whether it's, you know, stiff competition. Mm. But anyway, good, great film. Everyone remembers the beer scene. The beer scene, man. Uh, but don't 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 forget that. It was Tom Hardy in it. Tom Hardy that, was that, in it That, that well. crazy fight and yeah. deception going on. Uh, you had Will Poulter in it. Yes. The Bristol, Bristol yeah. British guy who's just so versatile. He was in it. And yeah, the film's quite deep. Mm. It's quite a deep so film. Quite layers. a good film. Yeah, so. film about love, loss. Yeah. You know, your family, the lengths that you'll take to kind of like maybe avenge, revenge. Yeah, exactly. all those things. So yeah, great movie actually. Yeah. Coming on uh, Amazon. Amazon. And tell us about this next one, Free Will. It's actually uh, Free Willy. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Free Willy. Yeah, Free okay. Willy Two and Three coming on Amazon. Wow. Yeah, Free Willy Two. I mean, the first time you free Willy, I mean, it's always it's always a good a good experience, you know. But but then the second time, the third time, I, I don't know how much. Uh, how, how many times can this whale be like you know many, get captured? I don't know. I mean, you free Willy too much. It's not really going to be a a good thing anymore. You know, it so, should be free once and once forever. You know, exactly. So if you love your whales. Go out and... Um, yeah, if you love your willies, you know, go and... <laughs> Whales and willies, go out and watch this one. <laughs> All right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's your new on your streaming and trailers. We've got a couple of things that we... Uh, wanted to, ooh, Gordon Bennett. <laughs> ooh, 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 leprechaun, leprechaun. <laughs> We've got a couple of uh, uh, new Blu-rays coming out this week. Okay. Yeah, just a couple of quick ones that I think we'll just sort of glean over. Yeah. But just to mention, Mamma Mia, here we go again, Mama. How could I forget you? I thought I thought that was still in cinema. Do you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure, sure it probably it is. is somewhere around the world, but yeah. it's coming out on Blu-ray DVD. Wow! This took this took I think sixty million here it was in the UK crazy. It alone. Was, yeah, close to Infinity War. Yeah, level, it was crazy money it took. Yeah. So that film it cleaned up. Families went to see this film. <laughs> yes, generations of families. Yeah, granddaughters, daughters, mothers, and all sorts. And now you can watch it again on Blu-ray. Exactly at Christmas. Uh, Hotel Artemis, which I know you saw. I saw, and, and you'd, you'd have to go back to episode 18 or 19. Yeah, probably. I think you you, you, t- you felt was a bit discon- discombobulated, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a bit of a... Mm, I feel kinda... discombobulated now when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell. So yeah, it's a bit of a... Mm, but I never saw it, but no, it had a good, a good cast. Didn't really live up to it. Even Jodie Foster was, was in it, wasn't she? Yeah, but Jody it just Foster. didn't live up to the expectation. Yeah, so like, like I said, gleaned and gone. So right. next we got anniversary corner yeah and in this in this week's anniversary corner we like we mentioned before at the beginning of the show the the titles that we chose are kind of based on the names of the films yeah yeah and they all have interesting interesting titles Mm. and just looking at these well okay look let's just go from 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 10 years ago 2008 a film called vantage point now Mm -hmm. i remember this one this is the one with uh keith sutherland right uh, Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid. Is, right, Keith, okay. is Keith Sutherland in it as well? He might be. Wait, about the president. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I can't remember who plays the president. El Presidente. Yeah. El Presidente is uh, what's his name? William Hurt. Will Hurt. Right. Yeah. 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 William Hurt and Dennis Quaid. William Hurt. Kiefer Sutherland. Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Matthew Whitaker. Fox, who was in Lost. In, God, whatever happened to him? Edgar Jimenez. Jimenez. From. Wasn't he, wasn't he from, uh, what's it called? Uh, oh, I've Gordon seen him around. Yeah, I can't remember. He's been in quite a few things, yeah. Yeah. So t- t- remind us again what the premise of this one is. 
uh, and Zoe Saldana as well, Segunda Weaver as well, not to forget. Oh. But the premise is that the president, I think he's, he's, a, he's arriving in Spain, I believe, mm. for some sort of, you know, you know, some event, some big event, yeah. going to sign some papers, change the world, all that kind of stuff. Uh, or by arms, you know, it's America. Yeah. But <laughs> no generalization. <though. laughs> no. Nah. Uh, so yeah, so then there's an assassination attempt on the American president and uh, they're trying to find out basically who's made this attempt. Who is it? Who's the culprit? And Forrest Whitaker is like a tourist in the area trying to capture this event, seeing the president. Uh, Dennis Quaid is like a CIA kind of guy. And he's trying to, he uses Forrest Whitaker's like footage, footage yeah. as one of the vantage points, as well as other CCTV and all kinds of stuff mm. to see if he can find out who was the, you know, who, who made the assassination attempt. Mm. And the film looks at different, looks at different clips, it kind of breaks things down on a, on a level that you would not normally think about. They use different clips to cross-reference, to find out yeah. who was standing here, who was in that reflection, who was there, where did the bullet come from, the trajectory, like, you know, who was in this corridor at that time. And they use all these different sources, which I think they do now in real life. Uh, and they try and find out who the killer was. But it's a good film, quite action-packed. It kind of gives you a little bit of a, I'm not saying it's, a, it's, it's close to born, yeah. but the way it was shot, the kind of grittiness of the camera angles and the different yeah. angles and so on. It kind of, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of like in that aisle, but on the edge of the aisle. Right. Okay. If we're in a supermarket. Yeah. But it was, it was a cool film. I saw yeah. it quite a few years ago, but it's a cool film. And I just noticed looking at the cast, it stars someone called Ayelet Zura. And do you remember what she's from? Have a oh, look she at was her. in uh, Daredevil. She, she was uh, Vanessa. Vanessa. Yeah. And here she played Veronica. Veronica. She's V. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, go check out Vantage Point. It's got like, you know, like Deval mentioned, you know, diverse cast. Mm -hmm. And if you want to see a movie where the president gets shot. From a different Vantage Point. Go exactly. watch it. Go check it out. Okay. Now this next film, tell us about this from 15 years ago. Uh, 2003 yes. so Cheapest Creepers 2 right okay yes. Justin Long stars in this one this is the one was this the one when the American football team like the college team were on that bus going somewhere and that is the it. bus broke down and then the Jeepers Creepers monster sort of comes out and and I remember watching this <laughs> this is so weird right so the bus is travelling interstate going yeah. through some kind of town and it's the same town where the first Jeepers Creepers were set in but it's set uh it's, was it set after or before? I can't remember if it's before mm. the events of the first one. or No, sorry, it's afterwards. Yeah, because it, it, it comes back every few years, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And the way he stops the bus, right, is he's got these little um, Dagger shuriken things, things yeah. but yeah. made out yeah. of bones and, yeah. like, you know, and he's throwing them. Yeah. These pierce the tyre of the bus and then that's when the carnage basically starts happening. So you've got the typical you know, high school students, hey man, what's out there? Let, no, we're going to go, like, you know, we've got to go, we've got to stay, we've got to go, mm. we've got to stay. And then one by one, he starts picking people off and then lo and behold, everyone dies apart from a few survivors and it gets set up for a third one. Mm, yeah. So what I will say though is this. <laughs> everyone dies. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what, I, what I will say is this though, the first one yeah. was executive produced or, or sorry it was presented by uh francis ford coppola serious this is no joke wow okay. he presented this movie because godfather there was, yeah <laughs> there was so much hype with the first one mm. and i gotta say the first hour of the first film is actually really good mm. and then it kind of dovetails a bit but okay. out of the trilogy or three or four movies the first one is probably the best one okay right? and I remember the second one more I can't remember you, the first one that yeah. much the second one I remember more but, I watched yeah. these recently to be honest with you and yeah I liked the first one a bit better there are some good death scenes in this one mm. like don't get me wrong I mean yeah, yeah. He, he does get them yeah. you find out a bit more about what this thing is and, yeah. and this thing's been around for like years hundreds of years or, or there's something there's a scene where the, 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 the dad and the son I think near the end he's got like a catapult type thing <laughs> yeah. waiting for it to be waiting for it to to come back because he's yeah. ready to kill it again yeah it's just a mad like a mad like yeah i'm waiting for this to come back when it does come back now i'm gonna send it right back down yeah. the hell where it came from you know that it's is just, so true yeah, it's just it's mad you can do your southern accents really good man <laughs> i don't know your, about that yeah your oldie southern accents it's good but yeah that was jeepers creepers from 2000 and Three. 2003. 15 years ago. Exactly. Yeah, man. 
All right. Next one. Another another film with a great title. I mean, th- does this exist? Do you think this exists? A perfect murder. You know, in a day in a day and age. I mean, maybe twenty years ago, maybe it did exist. Probably did exist. Yeah. Uh, Asks OJ, but then. Uh, yeah. You know, today in today's day and age, you get caught. Cool, I don't know, but yeah, the film that we're talking about is a perfect murder. Yeah, Michael Douglas, Gwyneth Paltrow, wow. Viggo Mortensen, wow. otherwise known as Aragon from Lord of the Rings. And the film is, yeah, if, it's one of those films I think is worth a watch. People think of it as, oh, it's an oldie 28 years ago. It's not going to be in HD. It's going to look a bit fuzzy, whatever, whatever. But no. <laughs> you know what I mean? With the lines. Yeah, like it's not going to be like, you know. Do you remember the tracking that you had to do on the Oh my just the gosh, tracking. don't, don't, don't. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, that's yeah, a great film. I, I mean, the premise is uh, Michael Douglas, because he's like a hot shot. Uh, uh, what do you, what's that? What's that financial Anchor? financial district called in America? Like, oh, um, like Wall Street kind Wall of guy. Street, yeah. yeah, it's funny because it wasn't even Wall Street as well. I think I got cut off, <laughs> didn't it? But yeah, <laughs> in this film, it's like a hot shot Wall Street money guy. Uh, he he was doing well, but in a, there's a period where he's not doing so well. Uh, he's got a, like a hot young wife, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, and I think he's always at work. She feels a bit, you know, just abandoned and not really looked after right. no, no attention and she wants to feel loved and she wants to feel needed and she comes across Vigo Mordesson who yeah. seems like a dark kind of you know a dark mysterious Tall, man dark and you handsome. know she can see that he's going to soon be in Lord of the Rings so <laughs> yeah. she thinks yes unsheathe his sword exactly if he's willing to you know fight legions for a ring imagine <laughs> she's thinking who he'll do that for a ring maybe yeah. i'll get that ring you know so <laughs> so she so she <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> she starts to have a, an affair with uh Virgo Mortensen's character <laughs> and basically michael douglas's character finds out about it and he's thinking about performing the perfect murder because he wants to he's jealous well he's not just jealous but he's angry but mm. also he finds out that Gwyneth Paltrow well it doesn't find out she's he, he's always known this but Gwyneth Paltrow comes from money right. and I think she's got money attached to her life insurance as right. in America happens a lot yeah so I think he wants to make money because he, he's, his, his work is not doing so well She's cheated on him. He's thinking, well, serves, serves you right. I'll kill you, get your money. Bob's your uncle. I'll get another, another younger girl exactly. and live my and life. Then, so, yeah. But it's a really well-made film. And there was another film that came out similar time called uh, uh, The Game, which I think is a gangster film. Again, yeah. stars Michael Douglas. I'm not going to talk about it now, but yeah. uh, it's another good film. But yeah, A Perfect Murder, 1998, 20 years ago. I'm pretty sure it might be on Netflix, you know? I think yeah. it's on Netflix. So if you guys over Christmas or whatever want to go and check it out, go ahead and write, go, go right yeah. ahead and do it. And just one final thing I'll just mad, I'll, uh, I'll just mention, I just had a quick read of this. It's a remake of an Alfred Hitchcock film. There you go. Yeah. There you and go. If you want to know what that film is, let us know. Mm-hmm. Or you can just search for it. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. So that was a perfect murder from 20 years ago. Okay. Now this one, hmm. The, the title of this film is just like amazing, isn't it? Right. Yeah. So tell it, tell us about this film. The title. I mean, we've seen different types of justice in our, in our lives. You know, there's, there's even a league the justice of the justice, you know, there's, there's a wrestler that was called Sid justice, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you know, there's all kinds of justice, but you know, is there a poetic justice? justice. And if what does poetic justice look like? Yeah, what is it? What does it mean? You can involve? get your straight talking justice, you can get your mumbling justice, you can get your <laughs> hard hitting justice. Exactly. But you got poetic, poetic justice. Poetic justice. And I think that kind of looks like Janet Jackson, Jackson and yeah. Shupak Shupak. <laughs> Sometimes my mind like jumps ahead, yeah? And it blends stuff. So when I said shoe pack, I meant two pack That's what I was going to say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so but, yeah. But this is, have you seen Janet Jackson in, in, in anything else? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I want to say I have, but I can't remember. I can't I'm remember. Sure she, she might have been, but I don't. I don't know. But in this movie, she plays a hairdresser, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. She plays yeah. a hairdresser, and she falls for for Tupac. Yeah. For I, think Tupac. She's, I think she's already got a boyfriend, but she falls for Tupac because yeah. I think he's the justice. That's quite poetic, mm. you know. And I think they're, they're they're quite young and they're going about their lives and having problems and stuff like that. But 
From what I, I saw this from years ago, I can't yeah, remember me too. fully, I can't what, it remember about, fully what it was about. For me, it's the t- like the title, like you say, a lot of these titles: Vantage Point, A Perfect Murder, Poetic Justice. These 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 titles, they just warrant, you know, someone to regard what's going on here, you know. So uh, yeah, I think Poetic Justice. Twenty five years ago, and Janet ja- Janet Jackson, she was a bit. I don't know, she looked a bit uh, like what's the word I'm looking for? Baby face. <laughs> baby faced baby faced baby yeah. faced yeah and uh, Tupac he was obviously quite young then as well yeah. Uh, but yeah it's one of those films that I think yeah. you know once in a while you sort of revisit exactly and it was directed by John Singleton John Singleton yeah, yeah who directed Boys in the Hood Boys in the yeah, Hood he's, so he's, you know it's got this kind of like urban gritty edge to it, has it as well LA kind of vibe isn't it, it? exactly because yeah. um, it was uh, <clears throat> Oakland they were, I think they were going to or going from Oakland mm. which I think John Singleton likes to refer to a lot because of the the sort of the cultural uh, connections it has, yeah. Black Panthers and all that kind of stuff. You and know, I, I didn't know this. The poems featured in the film were written by Maya Angelou. I don't know who that is, but now I know. Okay, bro. Seriously, you need to read up a bit yeah. more. Yeah, who's, who's that? Maya Angelou, man. She's like. Um, you got to Google it now, <laughs> isn't it? No. <laughs> She's an American poet. Is it like, really, really famous? Like seriously, Maya Angelou is like so, so, so famous. And when you pick up one of her books, basically she's got a poem for whatever you're feeling, or how, whatever something you're going through in your life. You know what? There'll be a poem, or there'll be like a, a saying, or there'll be some sort of thing that she's written down. Which when you read it, you'll be like, ah, oh, all is well in the world. Be- uh huh. Yeah. I tell you, man, deep, 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 deep. And I didn't know this, that she wrote the poems for the film. So, and you remember there were a lot of scenes in the movie where Janet Jackson will be writing stuff down and she yeah, speaks a lot yeah, into the camera yeah. and like you can oh, hear it. Oh, so that, comes, that stems from That's this. That's Maya Angelou's work, man. So, ladies and gentlemen, for anything, if you haven't seen the movie, watch it for that. Watch it for Maya's work as well. So, yeah, I, I mean, I would like to revisit it. Revisit it, man. Yeah. Revisit. Revisit. All right. Okay. So that was Poetic Justice. And now mm-hmm. this last movie from 30 Another years ago. great title. Oh, man. So like, you know, you get like, mm. I don't know, drinks called Sex on the Beach. Oh, yes, you do. Yeah. You get a uh, Hong Kong sling. Mm. Manhattan. Oh, no, sorry. Singapore sling. Singapore sling. Okay. You get Manhattan. Yeah. Manhattan's. But this one, Tequila Sunrise. Tequila Sunrise. See, I've experienced, I've experienced sunrises. I've experienced sunrises in my life in different states. Yeah. I've had, I don't know, I've had like a Coke sunrise. <laughs> I've had a Ribena sunrise. <laughs> Ribena. <laughs> I've even yeah. had a Lucozade sunrise. It was quite orange, that one actually. Uh, but I've never had a tequila, tequila sunrise. sunrise. It's, you know what? It's, mm. uh, it's, it is a nice drink. Mm. I remember when I went to Mexico. Ah, Mexico and I was at the bar one night and I just said hey can I have a tequila sunrise and they were like well really because you know what this is like oh is it a drink yeah it's a drink <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a dream. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, um, yeah, can I have a tequila sunrise? And they were like, really? Are you sure you want a tequila sunrise? Maybe you should go for like, you know, like a, like, you know, just tequila straight mm. up and everything. Had it. And it was all right. Okay. It was okay. And in terms of the movie, the movie was just all right, <laughs> I've got to say. <laughs> was it Mel Gibson and Mel uh, Gibson, Kurt Russell, Kurt Russell, Michelle Pfeiffer. Uh huh. I think there's some cops and there's some sort of deal that goes wrong, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And um, what I can say, though, it was uh, nominated for Best Cinematography back in 1988. Okay. So the setup is this. Uh, It's a thriller. It's uh, written and directed by Robert Town. It stars Mel Gibson, Michelle Pfeiffer, Kurt Russell. Do you remember Raul Julia? Yeah, and Bison. Bison. And Adam's family. (laughs) Yeah, he he passed away, didn't he? He did. He did. He passed away. Mm. And so... Mel Gibson, he plays a former drug dealer trying to go straight and his best mate is played by Kurt Russell, who's a detective. So clearly, you can already see the conflict. Your best mate is a copper or your best mate is a drug dealer. And if you go back way back when, obviously loyalties are going to be kind of tested, yeah, isn't, isn't yeah, it? Right? Yeah. You know, at one, one stage, you've got your friend and mm. you want to look out for them. Mm-hmm. But if your friend is like a bit of a rogue, mm-hmm. as Mel Gibson is... So there's a love story in there. Mac 
played by Mel Gibson. He's attracted to a restaurant owner called Michelle Pfeiffer. Nick becomes, likes uh, her as well. So this kind of, this whole little, you know, love triangle going on in there. And I think I remember when this film came out, it was just after Lethal Weapon Part 2. Okay. And it was billed billed as this kind of action, erotic crime Mm. thriller. But in the end, it didn't deliver on all of those things. And in the end, it was just kind of a bit of a weak, okay. like the percentage of the drink basically was, wasn't was really it? that strong. Oof. So yeah, it wasn't that. But it was the first time seeing Mel Gibson and Kurt Russell together. Mm, okay, so if you okay. want to see your 80s icons come together, mm. you know what? Why not go check it out? And Michelle Pfeiffer, she was big because she had already made in 90, back in 1982 was Scarface. And, you know, she was in kind of Greece too. Yeah. So she was in kind of like, you know. Oh, she was in Greece too? Yeah, she was in Greece too. Oh. Yeah. All right. So there's a lot of stuff going on in there. And ladies and gentlemen, I can't like, you know, go through the whole synopsis. So read it on Wikipedia. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was one of those movies where if you wanted to see Mel Gibson, Kurt Russell, this was the movie that you watched back in the 80s. I remember that at least. Okay. All right. Okay. Those are your anniversary corner films, ladies and gentlemen. They now, were. Yeah. Now let's move on to reviews. Mm-hmm. And we mentioned Suspiria in the UK's top box office top 10. So Deval, take it away. Okay. Wow. That's a, that is. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a I'm, deep I'm side. thinking how to unpack this, you know. Okay. First of all, I'm not going to spoil it. That's the first thing I'm not going to do. I'm not going to okay. spoil it because I think this, this film needs to be seen with relatively fresh eyes to get the best experience like I did I, I saw it with fresh eyes I saw the trailer uh, once and that was it then I moved on and went and saw the film right uh, one thing I will say the film is two and a half hours it's a mm. long film so mm. don't go see the latest you know uh, the latest uh, showing showing because it, I got a bit tired I was I, I left the cinema just after midnight and I was kind of tired but okay so Suspiria is a remake uh, Dario Argenta uh, made the film I think in this 1978 or, or the early 80s and it's a it's a mind-bending horror film basically a thriller uh, and it's just yeah it's a, it's a remake of that uh, so the premise is that uh, Tilda Swinton uh, runs like a, uh, like a dance school in oh it's in Germany yeah so it's just I think, yeah, so it's just during, it's just after, ooh, when is it actually? It's, it's either before the, the Second World War, I believe. So yes, it's, it's years ago in Germany. So Tilda Swinton runs a dance school. She has her dance teachers and she's got these students. Uh, she's uh, lost one of her students for whatever reason, I'm not going to say. And uh, a new student comes down because she wants to, she's heard of how good of how good this school is and she wants to come down and dance. Uh, she's from from America and it's uh, Dakota Johnson's character who was in Fifty Shades. Uh, she comes down to the school and she joins the school and, you know, things seem, okay, things seem good. All this time, I don't know, in the backdrop, you can sense there's something going on. The school isn't, what you would you would seem to be a normal school a normal sort of environment there's a bit of creepiness a bit of weirdness going on you know it's got that kind of vibe even the uh, cinematography is quite cold it's quite blue quite a blue dull gray tint to it which is quite contrary to the original uh version of this which is quite uh i don't know it's a bit weird that the, the technicolor aspect of it was quite vivid lots of colors in the first one in this one is very very uh, melancholic I, I should say if I, if I can say mm. that uh, yeah so it's just a weird atmosphere some of the staff are a bit weird looking and a bit the act's a bit crazy <laughs> a bit weird I should say yeah but uh, yeah it's just I know the the uh, the dancing as well is a bit the dance that they, they're trying to create is a dance that can't be done by anyone you've got to learn they said she said it took about 11 months before they could could perform this dance this dance it, it evokes some spiritual oh, madness. Shit. Yeah, it's like the dance is not a normal dance. They, they, the teachers are making them learn it for a reason. So Tilda Swinton is... Tilda Swinton is a teacher and she is... A few teachers, basically, I don't want to spoil it too much, but a few of the teachers are not what they seem. Right. They are linked 
to another to a cult, another force. Oh yeah. And the students gosh. are there for a reason to feed into that force. Right. Yeah. And there's, they, they pick certain students that are, that can help them achieve their goals in that respect. This is creepy. Yeah. So that's the premise. That's all I'm going to say with the premise so far. Right. Yeah. I probably haven't done it justice, but mm. I don't want to say too much because it will, it will ruin your experience. I don't want to do that to anyone. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is the cinematography yeah. and the, the style of this film. Yeah. Which is something that I loved. Mm. Yeah. The style, the cinematography, like I said, it's, it's got a dreary kind of grey, you know, mood to it, which already draws you in mm. to make you feel a bit unsettled, a bit cold and a bit like you need protection yeah, because you don't know what's going to happen around the corner. Right. And this film always leaves you with that sense. Oh. Always leaves you with that sense. <laughs> This is bad. Serious. Uh, you get some of the uh, snap zooms. Snap zooms, for people that might not know what I mean, is that, you know, like in the 70s, it happened a lot in, a lot, happened a lot in karate films, actually, where you get that sudden zoom in someone's face. Yeah. Like yeah. a snap zoom. So yeah. in this film, there are some... films. Yeah, karate films. In this, <laughs> in this films, <laughs> you get a lot of... Not a lot, you get some snap zooms. So there's a moment when, when Dakota Fanning's character is dancing doing her moves and stuff, stuff like that. And then Tilda Swinton's like standing around and the camera just sort of stops weirdly and just snap zooms into Tilda Swinton's face. And why, why do you think the director has chosen that, it's that just, technique? Because it lends back to the old school. Right. This is, a, this is a 2018 film. Sure. But if you didn't know any better, it could have been made 70s. Like, yeah. It's, it's like, it's, it's that kind of vibe. Right. But also the film is set back in the 30s or 40s, I believe. Oh. Because so I, I thought no, it was no, a modern, I thought it was a modern day this retelling is, of that. No, that it's, it's one. before I think before World War Two. I think so it's in Germany. Right. Okay. Uh, or was it? Oh, I'm getting mixed up. But it's, it's back in the day, basically. Okay. It's back in the day. Maybe it's after. The, maybe it's after the book. I think. I think it's after actually World War Two. So right. I think it might be even the 70s or 80s. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so the the, the, the techniques, the the filming, sure. Some of the, uh, the 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 camera angles the way the camera moves and focuses on certain things that maybe you don't know is important. Mm. Corners of the room, mirrors, people's facial expressions, people's body, body uh, parts. Right. It's just all obscure and random, but it all lends to the unsettling fact. You don't know what's around the corner. Right. You don't know what's around the corner. And this film it literally translates that visually. Here's a question for you. You know, like a film like Hereditary, yeah. where the small the small parts make up this kind of like big whole, you know, the sum of the parts make up yeah. the big, you know, yeah. the big whole part. Now, these little small things, do they lead up to something big at the end? Everything that you see in this film is for a reason. Right. And everything that you see in this film is there to take you on a journey to some form of conclusion, right, which okay. I'm not going to talk about today. Okay. But to answer your question, yes, okay. it is Good. leading you somewhere. You're not going to be, you're not going to watch the film and, and then be left with no answers or, well, in a way, maybe you might, I don't know, but there's a conclusion to, to this. Uh, but yeah, it's just a fantastic film. And like I said at the wow. start, it is, it belongs in the same aisle. So when you're shopping, it belongs in the same aisle as Hereditary. Okay, it good. It belongs in the same aisle as Rosemary's Baby. Oh, wicked. Yes. Okay, that's good. It belongs, it's just, it's like, it's just... Oh. Yeah, so you you know, you're in the supermarket and you think, yeah. oh, I'll pick up a bit of Hereditary. Yeah. Oh, next to that is Yeah, it's one Suspiria. of those, it's that kind of vibe. Mm. And I, like I say, the box office was shit, but... Literally, this film is not going to be a box office smash. Box no. office smash. This is going to be a cult classic. Right. Okay. So maybe somewhere down the line, yeah. people will pick this back up again yeah. and be like, people "Hey, people will be talking about this. This, this, this will be the sort of film when you go to film school. People talk about, you know, what films you're going to analyze, do your dissertation over. Yeah. These sorts of films are the films that that happens with. Wow. And I was watching a little cut from the director's uh, sort of ex explanation about why he chose certain certain shots and stuff like that. Yeah. There's this shot where they're having a conversation, Tilda Swinton and Dakota Fanning, they're having a conversation about some things and the, the mirrors are in the room. And it's like the way they filmed it, you should be able to see the camera in the mirror, but obviously they digitally take the camera out. Yeah. So you're in this room with all mirrors and the way they, the way you see it, the way they, they use the, the mirrors to act as a character yeah. in the, in the story, it's excellent. Wow. And some of the, some of the communication that he said, that he did on purpose in this film is not vocal. 
Mm-hmm. So sometimes during conversations, watch what people are touching, what their hands and do, what their hands and eyes are doing. And sometimes watch corners of the room because there's things that are happening in this film that's not in your face, but it all adds up. That's deep. And there's some really, it's a horror psychological thriller. Yeah. There is a, there's some mad horror in this film. And you know, like we, we mentioned this about Hereditary where it might have stayed with us, you know, for yeah. a couple of days afterwards. Yeah. <clears throat> did you get that same feeling? Did it? I, I did, did, did you not, think not about in the it? same way. Okay. So I was able to sleep, but yeah, it's it's not it's not nice. Okay. It's not nice. There's some very abnormally uh, there's some abnormal movements in this film, man. Really? Yeah, some, that's abnormal. Oh. And so there's, there's a few images, there's a few moments in this film where you get abstract images. Right. Very avant-garde, very just like wham for like 30 seconds and then it's, it moves on. And but the images you're seeing are for a reason. Yeah. But most people won't understand. I didn't understand some of the images for, for starters. Sure. But then it's, it just sinks in. And what does it? What does Suspiria mean? I can't say. Oh right. So do they talk about that in yeah, the actual they, movie? They kind of talk about certain things in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. But it translates. Uh, is it Italian or is it? Sounds Italian. Yeah. Because Dario, I think Dario Italian, yeah, was Dario, Italian, Argenta, right? Yeah. yeah. The Dario, Dario Argenta was responsible for many like horror classics in Italy and also the, uh, the, the, the Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead and yeah, things like that. Yeah, yeah. So, like the video and, nasties from the 80s. Yeah, yeah. And I think even, I'm not sure if it's his daughter, but Maria da, Maria D'Argento right. is involved in this as well and the right, production team. Okay. So uh, yeah, it's... So it's definitely worth a watch. Definitely worth a watch. Watch it in a cinema if you can before it leaves. Yeah. But at some point you've got to watch this film. Because I'm I'm just thinking it's debuts at number nine, it might not be. It's gonna go there. out. Yeah. It's not gonna be in a cinema for, for, for in the box office for much longer, but yeah. Yeah, I made sure I watched this film because I had okay. a funny I had a funny feeling that it's gonna be good. And All it right. was. So I would give it a good eight and a half. Oh wicked. Good eight and a half, yeah. Alright. That's good. Yeah. Good, good, good. All right, okay. And what was the other film that you saw? Girl in the Spider's Web. Mm. Yeah, which is a sequel to uh, the Dragon Tattoo films that had Rooney Mara and, yeah. and Daniel Craig, I think, as well. But which was born from, originally from, from the Scandin- uh, Numi Rapace, the Scandinavian versions yeah. of the Dragon Tattoo series. Yeah. And this continues from that, but this stars Claire Foy. Mm. And it's set again in Scandinavia, actually. And this one's a bit more of like a hacker thriller type film. Okay. So she's, uh, she's badass, but she's a very, very damaged character. Right. Uh, she's very one line, you know, she's moody, she's brooding, yeah. but she's very clever, very intelligent, a bit of a black widow in a way, but not, if you know what I mean? Yeah. Not as tough as black widow, but she'll, she'll take someone on. Exactly. She'll, she'll, she'll take on multiple people actually. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she's really good with tech. Like she could walk into any environment and take, hack the tech. Like I think it's too easy actually. The wow. way she does it, it's literally too easy. She just okay. walks into a room, she'll have your laptop, she'll see what you're, she'll hack into your 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 your, your uh, camera, yeah. your phone camera, see what you're seeing, and she'll say to you, okay, the, the table on your left, put the key down there. Okay, now walk up, and the people's like, how could she see what I'm doing? She, yeah. she just sees everything. Okay. But the premise is basically uh, that a computer genius of some sort, I think, does he work for the government? Mm, can't remember, but uh, played by Steve Merchant. Is that his name? Oh my God, from... Uh, um, yeah, Ricky yeah, Gervais's Ricky mate. Gervais's yeah, mate. Yeah, Steve yeah, yeah, Merchant. Yeah. Uh, so he's developed a software package or something that basically can take over any nation's uh, nuclear weapons mm. and, have, and have and can take over their weapons and have access and control of those weapons. Yeah. So that's a massive thing to have. Imagine having the ability to control Russia, all the, the weapons. Russians, nukes, yeah. America, whoever. So this package, this software has fallen into the wrong hands. Mm. He's asked her to get it back. Right. Uh, she's trying to do that. The American government are trying to do it. Another organisation are trying to do it. Yeah. They're all trying to get this software and lives are on the line. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, what's his name? The one from... Sorry to bother you from Get Out, Atlanta, uh, Stanfield. Ooh, Lakeith Stanfield is in it. Right, he's okay. in it as well. He's, he's, as well. he's like a hacker as well. He's really good as well. Okay. But yeah, it's it's a it's a good film. So what is it more kind of like is it is there a lot of action in it or there's, more there's is quite it a, a bit thriller? of action? It's a hacker thriller. There's yeah. a bit of action. Uh there's bits where she's on a motorbike. I think on the trailer you see her going you across see her the, on ice. the ice. Yeah. Uh she yeah, it's like basically it's one of those films where there's so many it's, it's almost like a like a a born type film right, just with okay. a female character yeah. almost like that actually yeah 
Uh, and then she's got a bit of a past as well. She has, because if you've read, I've read actually one of the books or a couple of the books mm. and everything, and um, there is this whole massive backstory. And yeah. um, it's really... Li- Elizabeth's... Uh, Salander. Salander, yeah. yeah. And there's kind of like the whole, like how she came to mm, be and mm. she's why very she... damaged, yeah. Very damaged, loads of stuff going on. And so they have those Scandinavian films with with Rumi Rapace. Yeah, Rumi Rapace, yeah. yeah. And, and we, which were really good. Yeah. And then, um, what do you want to call it? Daniel Craig jumped on board and everything and it didn't do her so well. But I'm happy that they have decided to kind of reboot this and come up with another little, uh, another episode in the whole Elizabeth Salander. Exactly. Kind of, you know, uh, well, so it's worth watching then. Yeah, definitely worth watching. I wouldn't say it's the, it didn't blow me away, but I wasn't mm, bored. Okay. It's somewhere in between. It's like maybe seven or so. Right. But, and, um, and what about her, uh, Claire Foy? Claire Foy, yeah. Claire Foy is gangster right uh, i've not seen her in many things i've not seen the, the the queen or the the crown the crown that's on netflix i've not seen it but i heard it's really good yeah i've seen uh she was in first man first man i saw her in unsane which yeah. is really good i like that a lot and i've seen her in this so i've seen her in three films this year and all of the films have been good been really good yeah so okay. she's 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 really small mm. but don't let that fool you yeah she can kick ass wow and she she, she she's actually got a scandinavian accent which when which I see in the very, trailer, very convincing. Wicked. Yeah, she just, I don't know, her facial expressions, her owning the role, all that kind of thing. She just actually, I don't know what it is. Maybe the word is, I believe her. Yeah. I believe she is who she is. She, she like, you know, even if something's happening in the film that are a bit weird, she makes it believable. Wicked. So Claire Foy is gangster. Yeah, wow. she's, She's doing a good job. All right. I can't complain, actually. I'm going to try and check that out. Yeah. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, those are your film reviews this week. And let us know what you think, whether or not you've had a chance to see Suspiria, Girl in the Spider's Web. Let us know. Get in touch with us. You know, start the dialogue. Um, Yeah. So now let's move on to Hidden Gems. And we've Mm. got two films over here. Yeah. Which... I mean, one you've you've kind of mentioned before. If I mentioned it before, I couldn't remember, but I put it on there for a reason because Tilda Swinton's in it. Yeah, but just just now in the Suspiria, you mentioned Rosemary's Baby. Oh, that one, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm. So this week we're going to talk talk about Rosemary's Baby, yeah. and we need to talk about Kevin. Yes. Which have you seen that film? Yes, it's a gangster film. It's it's a very disturbing film. I watched it alone one time, just randomly. And it's directed by Lynn Ramsey, who directed You Were Never Really Here. Titles that are almost sentences that just we need fill to talk you about with questions. I know. Now we need to talk about Kevin. I remember someone recommended this movie to me. They said, "Oh, look, go out and watch this film. Mm. It's not. It, it's a horror film, but it's not like a horror film. Mm. It's it, it's it, like you know, it's a drama, but it's also got so many other different layers to it." And I was like, "Okay, let me just go out and check this film out." Mm. I watched it. I came out of the movie, and I was like, "Wow." to the point where like I want to go back in and watch it again because there are just so many things involved in this movie so it stars Tilda Swinton it stars Ezra Miller who plays Kevin yep, yep. and Ezra Miller is Flash. the new Flash yeah okay and he's in it, Fantastic it, Beasts yes yeah right he's in there as well and from the beginning this movie was really really strange very strange uneasy it, yeah even in the, even the beginning, there was the uh, Valencia tomato thing. The way she's writhing, yeah. she's sliding around. And I just thought the images that they portrayed, like, what does that mean? Like, you know, is, is the color of red, is it the fact that this is something that's about to come? Or is it, I don't know, I don't know. It was just kind of like the images that they showed were, mm. right, okay, Tilda Swinton, she's married, she has a son, uh, she has two is it a boy? Yeah, two boys, right? Yes, yeah, she's got two, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, two boys. Kevin, who, I mean, is a very strange child, right? He's disturbed. Secluded. Very disturbed. Like monosyllabic. Uh, he's kind of like, you know, doesn't really engage, doesn't really talk much. But clearly you can see that there is this relationship between mother and son. And, mm. and they've got daughter as well, I think. Oh, so, is it yeah. the daughter? Yeah. yeah. So... I mean, what can we say about the, when you talk about Kevin? It's, How would you sum this movie up? I would sum this movie up as it's uh, it's a very disturbingly visceral look 
at what is the journey of the outcomes we as a public see on the news when you hear about a kid who's gone to a school and committed atrocities mm. you know and this this is this shows a bit of the journey and it shows that you cannot always get an answer you, you cannot always fix something or someone as much as you try you cannot always do it for uh I guess a brief synopsis of the film is Kevin is a disturbed character from an early age. He's shown signs of dis- of being disturbed. Yeah. His, his mother and father are trying to do the best they can and help him and be normal and stuff like that. Yeah. But at each sort of, you know, uh, checkpoint in his life, you know, from early ages to five to 10 to puberty, he just displays behavior that is very 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 socially unaccepted yeah and it comes to a it comes to a stage i'm not going to spoil it because it should be seen yeah it gets to a stage where he does some unspeakable shocking unspeakable things that you will not see coming you i guarantee you this you will not see coming if you see yeah. this coming you're bullshitting yeah man. you will not see this coming uh he does things that yeah it's just and, and so not nice exactly and you know, the, the film does this thing, right, where, okay, you have a family, husband and wife, you have children, mm. and one of the parents is concerned about a child, mm. right? And then one of the other parents is like, hey, it's just It'd like, right. yeah, yeah, he's just growing up. He's just going through growing pains. You know, every kid is like this. Every kid is like that. But what if you have given birth to basically like Satan? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. and I, I shit you not, Duval. It's one of my biggest fears that I have as a parent where yeah. I think to myself, what if like, you know, you can show all the love in the world and you can have, you can give your kid time and you can give your kid love. And, but if they turn out to be mm. this like monster, mm. what the hell do you do? Mm. And as a parent, Tilda Swinton, she has to deal with this thing yeah. that's happened. Right. Yeah. And she deals with it in a really, like she struggles. Yeah. And her neighbors and stuff let her know about it too. Yeah. And the, the film is not, it's not shown in a linear way, is it? I think the time goes back and forth. Yeah. So it's a bit discombobulated. <laughs> Got it in there again. Got it in there again. But uh, So mm. it starts off after the yeah, event. Yeah, after yeah, exactly. So it's interesting. It, yeah. Yeah. And it's based on a book by Lionel Shriver. I haven't read mm. the book. and But what I can say is, ladies and gentlemen, go out yeah. and watch this movie mm. and you'll thank, you'll thank us for it afterwards. Yeah. And let us know what you think about it. So that's called There's Something. We need to talk about Kevin. Talk about 2011. Kevin. Yeah. I was thinking about There's Something About Mary. But no, no, <laughs> it's a very completely different, different movie. <laughs> okay. The second movie that we want to mm. mention is uh, Deval already mentioned it when he was talking about Suspiria, is a movie made in 1968 starring Donald Sutherland. 40 years ago, yeah. 40 years ago. Anniversary Corner as well. Definitely. And this is uh, Rosemary's Baby. Yeah. And. The Mia Farrow? Mia or, Farrow. Yeah. And you know, we watched Hereditary earlier mm. on this year. And there were so many things in Hereditary, mm. which when I kind of was looking at that, I was when I was reading up on Rosemary's Baby as well, I just thought there's so many mm. link. you know, you could link possibly even what you just said about Suspiria yeah, as well. And those three, those three movies. 100%. 100%. So what is, just remind me again about the setup for... Um, yeah, Rosemary's Baby. So it's uh, Mia Farrow and her husband, whose name I can't remember, but they move into a uh, an apartment uh, trying to start, you know, just young couple trying to do well in the world he works i think she stays at home sort of looks after the house and stuff like that yeah uh and she i guess begins to have coping problems and you know she just not she's not really things aren't really right for some reason the neighbors are a bit you know mm, what's the word overzealous <laughs> they're a bit too friendly and yeah a bit, bit by bit they they try to get involved in their lives and it it, it, it starts to fall really innocent and for a long part of the film, you'll think it is innocent. But then things start to unravel. She starts to be suspicious. And the husband, again, is oblivious. And he's like, like you said about the husband in Kevin, he's like, oh, yeah, they're just being nice. Oh, yeah, they're just our neighbours. Oh, yeah, let's just go and get a cup of tea. Oh, yeah, yes. It's like, you know, you think, oh, maybe it's all her. Yeah. But then you start to realise there's there's more going on behind the scenes. Yeah. And yeah and yeah this film when i first saw it i didn't really i had no idea what i, what I was watching mm. I, was, I, I had no idea that it would turn out the way it would turn out yeah and it's just for me good filmmaking doesn't show you what's coming sure in your lane 
<laughs> it's hanging around the corner. Yeah. And this film does this in a really, really good way. Yeah. You know, and it's an old school film, 1968, but this film has aged really well. A bit like you, actually. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so <laughs> glad you said that. But it's so true. And you know, I remember I'm going back a bit oh, now. Shit, it's 50 years, not 40. 1968. 68, 50 years. 50 years. Gordon Bennett. Yeah. And sorry, I, I, um, I was incorrect when I said Donald Sutherland. No, sorry, no, I was thinking about another film. Okay. This is John Cassavetes. This oh, okay, is a different, okay. yeah. So, so uh, please ignore me. But what you said, uh, I remember what you said about a film. We, we remember, remember this film called... Was it with Deborah Winger? Who's that? Deborah Hershey, Deborah Winger. What kind of film was about that? The d- about the demon uh, mm. being the ra- raping. What was it again? Oh, the entity. The entity. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 So the, the, oh, there's. Don't, don't talk about that, yeah, please. Don't talk about that. But, ah. but, but there's, there, there are connections to, mm. like, you know, these movies and, like, mm. what we're talking about right now on that movie and with. Um, we need to. Um, Kevin. Sorry. Yeah. No, Hereditary. Hereditary, yeah. So all these this, the themes in there, like, you know, things are being set up. Yeah. The people are there for a reason. Yeah. They've been chosen for yeah, a reason. Exactly. It's all this stuff yeah. going on in this movie and they were doing it back 50 years ago. Yes. You know, they were making this up 50 years ago mm-hmm. and we're seeing it now in these new modern day films. But as a kind of a psychological, like terror, basically, mm. you, this is the your worst nightmare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your worst. Because some of the greatest evils in the world look like regular people yes and in these films everyone looks regular there Happy are no Smiley monsters Bames. on display yeah so that's for me is real horror exactly it's the stuff that you don't see exactly uh so ladies and gentlemen if you can stomach this suspiria we need to talk about kevin and rosemary's baby rosemary's baby go mm-hmm. check them all out check them all out for sure it's a really good selection of films here that i think they all will stand the test of time. Yeah. Really have good com- uh, conversational points and really stick in your mind as well. So our job is done. Exactly. With that one. And let us know what you think about it. I heard that. So I think this brings us to the end of the show. End, end of, of the 27. Sh- end of the road. Mm. And yeah, is there anything that you want to end on? Just want to say, yeah, thank you for downloading the show and listening. Uh, please, please let us know your thoughts. Let us know if there's anything else you want us to review or talk about. And uh, yeah, continue to communicate with us on our social media, on our Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. Just put in the Flixsters podcast and you will find us. And again, a little treat for you, a little thank you for listening to the show. Uh, just, uh, you've got to be a subscriber and just pop in our, on, our, on our, one of our social media platforms, uh, 27 on the way to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Pop that in there and we will send you a free cinema code for any view or cinema, cinema, but only in the UK, unfortunately. So again, thank you guys. We will see you at number 28. Peace out. Bye.